Oh, it is November 21st. Yeah. And, and happy Dishonored Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I would support that. Oh, God, gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they celebrate that on American Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, they celebrate that the day before American Thanksgiving. Oh. <laughs> it's so funny. Is it? It's really funny. I mean, I happy think it's... Happy Dishonored Labor Day. It's one of those things that... <laughs> happy Dishonored Bastille Day. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> happy Dishonored Arbor Day. Yeah. It's one of those things that three people on the planet think are funny, and those people just happen to be this on us yeah, three podcast. on the podcast. <laughs> Dishonored Greenpeace. Yes, because they have all that they whale. Shit. They got that whale fat oh, garbage. Right. If there yeah, is yeah, a yeah. Dishonored Greenpeace, they're not good at their job. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're just the annoying, like, oh god, I gotta get my uh, Dishonored <laughs> Greenpeace. They're called that also. <laughs> all the, <laughs> probably all the like. <laughs> Weirdly, nothing to do with the world dishonored. They're just they were there was just a scandal several years ago. So oh, it's those dishonored first, Greenpeace dishonored guys. Greenpeace, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, they're dishonored now. Yeah. Yeah. Can you have me? But it's a thing. It's just sort of understood that if you're a public official in the world of Dishonored, you have sort of just a yearly, like, kind of um, keeping up appearances donation that you make to Dishonored Greenpeace just to kind of keep things above board. But, like, in secret, you're just fucking killing every whale. You're just slaughtering (laughs) whales like a fucking madman. But you've got, you have to, like, you have to, you know, kind of buy into the. Mm. Like, oh, it's very important to support Dishonored Greenpeace. We support Dishonored Greenpeace. Yeah. Despite their past, uh, right? You know. Yeah, you have to. You're magnanimous. You're deliberately, publicly magnanimous yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. That's why the game's called Dishonored. <laughs> it's named after Dishonored Greenpeace. Yeah, the disgraced charitable uh, uh, anti whaling yeah, anti whaling organization within the world. Yeah, yeah. It's a, if you read the books, if you read the lore in the game. Oh, yes. it's in the Dishonored expanded universe. Yeah, the ex- no, no, no. It's in the it's in the books in the game. Like if you oh, if you like read all the things, you find I out. I think about he meant the Dishonored this. novels, which, oh, I, which yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the Timothy Zahn Dishonored trilogy. Well, there's a there's the prequel trilogy about re, about Greenpeace. Um, this is the pre Dishonored Greenpeace years. So, oh, it's a, if you want to find out about the fall, maybe of, we're learning the actual origin of the Dishonored universe. Is that it is actually our <laughs> world, and then once oh, when Greenpeace becomes Dishonored, uh, oh, no. when they discover that weird whale fat right. shit, yeah, yeah, it's boring. And girls don't wear <laughs> skirts anymore. Yeah, that that's part of the scandal Everybody for sure. Pants. Yeah. Stupidest shit. What are we talking about? Dishonored Green yeah, Peace. Dishonored. 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 Okay. Happy Dishonored happy, Thanksgiving. <laughs> happy Speed Pig. Oh, that's what they call Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they don't call it that. It's just what they say. Right, right, right. right. Oh, it's like Father that's, Christmas. That's their sort, of, that sort yeah. of just cultural yeah. greeting on Thanksgiving. Yeah. On like how we call it Turkey Day. Yeah. They say, like, oh, happy Turkey Day. They say, oh, Speed Pig. They say, Speed Pig. Gobble, gobble. Yeah. It's like Leap Day Williams. Some stuff in a sewer. Yeah. You'll see that in the in the Dishonored DLC. You'll see Speed Pig Gobble Gobble written on the walls of various in really nice font. Yeah, yeah, their graffiti fonts too clean. Like, the Dishonored guys. It's just in that world. Everyone has really good penmanship. Yeah, that's true. That's all that it is. And line quality. Yeah. And also, double yeah. uh, yeah, sure. Oh, I thought you were singing the theme song. It is double XP weekend. That's true. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to get, get out of Get your double XP and Blops. But it's not. Did you know Blops sold $500 million its first day? Blops yeah, 2. It's the biggest one. <laughs> Bigger than Halo. <laughs> Looks like you backed the wrong horses. When the Halo 4 di- giant title card comes up, the, the, the lineway on the 4, just my brain read it as Halo. Halo. <laughs> <laughs> I was like Halo, <laughs> and it's like it's like a Sam Raimi style, like boom, like in your face sort of the thing. Ha- oh, it's the most underwhelming one of those though, because it sort of pans up the space, and then it just like 
the word the halo title card comes up but there's no sound stinger and then it just yeah. kind of like it, it seems almost like it might have faded up a little bit like their scripting language required the title the ui yeah. to fade or something. <laughs> so it just goes uh, halo, uh, uh, and then it faded away i was bummed I actually, you know what? Been like, been I was like, that fucking title would have been better. It, it would have been better if, if they would have just gotten Steve Gaynor to just go, Halo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I um, feel like the Halo logo is the bad? original one. Well, the original one's fine. Like, it's just what it is, right? But then, like, the more numbers and stuff they put on it, the more it just falls apart. Like, it's just not. No, it's, it's not a robust typeface that you can yeah. just write anything in. It looks right, like right. garbage, you know? Like, yeah. Whereas, like, GTA, yeah. you could put a number after that forever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the new. Did you guys see the GTA 4? The new five. GTA Five trailer, yeah, yeah. Like the moment where the the logo type comes up is amazing. Like it yeah. just yeah. still looks so good. God, Ugh. Ray Larrabee. What is that? The guy who designed it? Yeah, I think so. At least yeah. he was the visual designer at Rockstar for a while, and he makes a bunch of good fonts. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, but it's also just the Price is Right logo. The Grand Theft Auto no, logo is literally no, no. I know it's the best, but it's but it's not just that. God, it's, not just, goes, it's not just when the, the, when the Grand it's Theft Auto like, comes up and then the five and the V and the little like banker's yeah. note uh, yeah. lettering. It's amazing. Ooh. And the thing that's so great about that, like that moment in the, but then also just the way that trailer is scored in general, yep. yeah, is their yeah. choices of Both. like what beat to bring things in on because they don't. The, most game trailers just do the like bum. Bum. Oh, yeah, no. And the rhythm of the, the rhythm one, of the new like, GTA Five trailer is really it's re- good. It's fucking good. The both both GTA Five trailers have been really solid. I think. Yeah, I know. The one that yeah. had the crazy synthesizer like psychedelic rock soundtrack yeah. in it. God, yeah. Well, in the new one, the new like the Stevie Wonder track in yeah. that one was fucking good. God, those guys are still so much better at that than just anybody else yeah. in this industry is. I They're, kind of am excited about GTA Five. I am too. <laughs> I'm fucking stoked to play I GTA Five. Any way we could all play together, like the That'd the fact fun. that it. We could have seen GTA Five. Oh yeah, yeah. hot seating. I hot seated. Um, uh, what was the huge one? San Andreas. Yeah. Mm. Like the look of it. Also, the three protagonists are like, interesting and also frustrating. Mm-hmm. Just they're cool. Like it feels like those guys are getting more and more comfortable with just putting weird dudes. Yeah. As the person you're controlling, but it is frustrating that there isn't a girl out of three fucking guys. GTA Four and Five have now mm, had six yeah, protagonists. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all dudes, but like. GTA, uh, Nico, is that his name in 4? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was cool. And then I didn't play the two expansion packs, which sucks because those both seemed actually pretty interesting and actually oh, kind of more yeah. narratively bold than, even, than mm-hmm. GTA 4 was. But then this Let's intro this podcast. looks weirder. It's November 21st, 2012. This is Idle Thumbs 84. I'm Chris Remo. I'm Jake Rodkin. And I'm Sean Vanneman. And there's a dateline in there somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, fucking GTA 5 yeah. and 4. The, just the way that they represent the soft my, – my, my single favorite thing about about the GTA 5 trailer and also about GTA 4 is just the way they represent kind of soft light in urban environments. Yeah, the lighting, stuff the lighting in the GTA – in the, the current gen of GTA games is ridiculous. It's so far afield of the just like super specular, like yep. crazy <laughs> normal map to, to shit. It's just like – and part of that, I'm sure, is for is for technical reasons and this, just how huge those environments are. But a lot of it is also clearly just a deliberate, muted way to portray those environments. And I just think it looks amazing. Yep. Just no one else makes games that look like that. Do so very know, few people do anyway. Do you know what sort of – it's back in San Andreas effectively, right? Five. I guess like, so, yeah. It's yeah, in yeah, San Fierro. Right? What, what's yeah. the one that's the, in the south? What's the, what's the Los Angeles one called? I forget. The city yeah. in GTA world? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. It's that one, I assume, right? It's yeah, be yeah, yeah. But it's yeah, California. I mean, it looks so much like I didn't grow up in Los Angeles, but I did grow up in San Diego, which is about an hour and a half south of Los Angeles. And it just the way that the accuracy with which they've captured just the feeling of just the way the light hangs Southern in the California air. Yeah. urban sprawl exactly is amazing the, just the, the, because the, it's the questionable so air density yeah. is exactly. captured just really the way well. the yeah, light just sort of diffuses through the smog when yeah. you're in LA. Yeah, like the moment you come over the grapevine. And like cruise into the city on the five or the one one, it just feels like LA. It really like, does. Yeah. yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, and just the way people look, right? Like the way people dress, like yeah. the kinds of people you see if you're in an actual like city area in Southern California. Right. It just look. It's it is so spot on. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean the 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 density of tall buildings versus short buildings, like all those things. Just if you've spent, you know, I yep. spent ten ten years in San Diego, and like just. Yeah. exactly like it it's the same thing it's amazing it's appealing to me in a way that san andreas wasn't for some reason too and i don't know what that reason is hmm. but it's probably a highly suspicious reason but i don't know san andreas has hit at the wrong time for me i thought it was a cool game and i was really impressed by it but it just was like it wasn't part of my like it was a ps2 game and i wasn't like playing a lot of ps2 games at that time 
and it actually, just... yeah, I, I was I was really excited about San Andreas, and we've probably talked about this a little bit on the cast in the past, but because Vice City was my favorite GTA and probably still is. Um, yeah. I liked it. I liked it more than I played four. Even though I liked four quite a lot. No, I played GTA four the most. Four was my favorite. I played more Vice City than any GTA by a but ton. Vice City's number two for me. Yeah. And when San Andreas was coming out, I was like, "Fuck yes, more of this!" And it's got San Francisco in it, which means hills. So you can just go ape shit up and down, mm-hmm. uh, all that stuff. But then playing that game, it it was the one GTA that's fallen into the sort of modern game design trap of spending so much time tutorializing you that you don't mm. actually get into it where like that game yeah it felt like it was like learn how to ride a bike learn how to eat learn how to run learn how to get into a mm-hmm. car like okay fucking christ you're this is the third gta game for this console yeah, generation right. every like yeah. you set the standard for how driving works on modern dual stick mm-hmm. trigger controls like let me get in a goddamn car and yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking bomb up and down the interstate yeah that's I well and that was the I, stuff I, I that was the best about hard game. Way yeah. More. Yeah. i just did, it was i could tell that there were hours and hours before yeah. it would just it would unlock a goddamn interstate highway mm-hmm. for me so I ended up getting just far enough along that I could jump into a river and try to swim my way across. Right. The, the game just turned yeah. into about two days of me running away from the National Guard as I tried to right. escape uh, L.A. city limits yeah. just so I could haul up I-5. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I was like, well, I'm not going to be able to actually do this unless I play, unless I spend like a weekend or a week worth of evenings on missions. And I never played it. Mm-hmm. And I'm sad. Yeah. It also had too much of the bad mocap bro hug. When you go through those games, do you stay to a mission structure and just try to complete the missions? Or? I'm pretty fluid. Like, I'll go back and forth. Like, I'll have yeah. moments where I'll, I'll play through a bunch of missions in a row, and then I'll just, just stick around for a long time. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it Same depends way. a lot on the game and, like, kind of, as you said, almost kind of just what gaming mode I'm in. Right. Just at any given moment. Like, I think I actually completed all of them except for, um, except for San Andreas just because it was so enormous. Um, but, I mean, GTA is so is funny for me because it's one of those series where I have there's a lot of things about it that are frustrating to me and like a lot of unfilled potential in my like just to me, mm-hmm. you know, which doesn't mean much because obviously the things that I value are not necessarily the same things like the Hauser Brothers value or whatever. But right. but you know, like for me, I can always imagine a version of GTA that's even more just completely up my alley. But it's never the one that actually comes out. Mm-hmm. But there's enough stuff about them that I like that just no one else even bothers to try in a game. That that I just the feeling of soaking in an actual exactly. modern city. Yeah, is that's so, totally it. And yeah, nothing touches it. No, absolutely nothing. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, no one even tries, and right? Like four and five just, seem like they're doing that to, to the fucking max. Like, right. just, well, that's why four was my favorite. Standing still in four, just fucking yep. strolling through New York in four was mind crushing. Yep. It was so good. Four, or like being underneath was, an L track and just having the weird graded yeah, like afternoon oh shadows over your guy. Ugh, so good. Like four but was, also was less up a fucking jump. consistent and like. <laughs> strong in its tone than gta vice city was yeah. which i think is probably one of the th- reasons everyone likes that's like a lot of people's favorite one yeah which makes total sense um and four was a lot more scattered and weird but all of that city stuff was just so incredibly executed that i just yeah it was the one that was for me the most pleasurable to just exist in that city yep. and like it felt to me most like the one where i wasn't the most important person existing yeah. in the city yes which yeah. is the thing i loved about it you yep. know like it i felt like i could just melt into the city in a way that you do in a city for real yeah uh, and i just i love that sensation i love that that's feel. true it being a sort of like the immigrant story stuff yeah like just, yeah. you're not a boss yeah no. and so yeah. i don't know i don't know how five will be with respect to it that it seems stuff. with three protagonists like we're probably going to get a mix a little i'm sure both. there's yeah, just going to yeah, be yeah, you're sure. yeah you're a dude or you're a lord yeah Oh, you know what I also really loved was the GTA 4 expansions, the Gay Tony and uh, and Lost, Lost and Damned. That stuff was fantastic. Yeah, we God, talked. You talked about so those good. a lot when you were playing yeah, on the old no, cast. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. Yeah. I wonder if there's. I wonder if they have plans to keep doing that kind of thing. It seems like that type of DLC, like Minerva's Den, is another thing that's kind yeah. of like that. Although it's different because the Geo is new in Minerva's Den. But um, I get the feeling that the Housers must. Well, the, they must be into that. Because they put out GTA 4, then they put out Lost and Damned, and then they put out The Ballad of Gay Tony, and that must have resonated with them internally to some degree, because GTA 5 seems like it's just going to be out of the box that, to a certain degree, where it is three separate stories all taking mm-hmm. place in the same city. Yeah. But I think the yeah. deal in GTA 5 is that you can indiscriminately swap between protagonists really? and between stories. Yeah, wow, I, that's awesome. I ugh. I remember hearing that, but I, I haven't actually read any yeah. previews on this. So I, I would prefer be, that. I mean, honestly, yeah, I would really prefer cool. just give me a smaller upfront campaign you know, that's like six hours, eight hours, and then just start feeding me like some short stories, essentially. Yeah, like, I don't I, think that's what it's going to be, though. I would love that, though. Yeah. Or if, if all those of those three stories are. Yeah, we've talked about that in the past about how it would be really actually sweet 
and Rockstar would never do it, but if you got a Lost and Damned length like primary campaign effectively that or yeah. like you just got a, a multi-pack of of those but yeah. this game well, that's what i wanted that's what when i started playing dragon age one that's what i was really hoping that game would be and i still think that would have made for a stronger i liked dragon age one but i thought it could have been way way cooler if they would have just doubled down on that origin stuff and mm-hmm. just been like actually depending on which combination of class race and gender you play which is already fascinating that like every single one of those variables makes for a different experience um, if they had, if those were all like set at the same time or something mm-hmm. and you, and the, the entire game, instead of like an hour and a half of that, and then a million hours of just RPG stuff, like if each of those had been like four hours of that, and that was just the whole game, I think that would have been amazing. Mm-hmm. Like just incredibly cool. Yeah, totally. I like games that are short. Yeah. That's why, I mean, also we didn't plug it on the podcast or anywhere because we're really bad at doing this, but we played Minerva's Den with Steve on our Twitch oh, yeah. channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's up there and it is, pro- I mean, this is no slight to any of the Twitch streams we've done because they're all really interesting and awesome in their own right. But I was the most captivated moment to moment sitting next to Steve and watching him just play the game and talk about it. Like, it's awesome. It's Had like, you actually completed Minerva's Den before? I never finished no. it. Okay. No, no, no. He saw the ending for the first yeah, time. Yeah, so it was great. And the ending of Minerva's Den is good. That's really great. It's really wonderful. So you can spend like two and a half hours and watch the entire story of Minerva's Den with Steve. And uh, we, we try to shut up during the, um, the the logs and stuff. The logs and stuff so you could follow along. And uh, yeah, that's up on the Twitch channel. So check it yeah, out. That was cool. Yeah, it's really, really good. Yep. I was I just... Mean, oh, oh, go ahead. No, no. no. I was going to change the subject. <laughs> that's fine. Oh, I was going to change it back to GTA Five. That's fine. I was just looking up a little bit of stuff about it. And it sounds like the three protagonists are at least on the missions that it talked about on the Wikipedia page are spatially near each other. Like you switch between people within a mission, which is really fucking weird. Whoa. Somehow. Whoa. That's mechanically weird. That so bizarre. now it makes, I, I just don't I know wonder, enough about GTA gonna have 5. Co-op, co-op campaign? I don't know anything about that. We're, we're bad for not doing our homework on GTA 5 apparently. Oh, I was, I didn't even know we were, I didn't think we were going to talk about it. I know, but I mean so, like yeah. I've, I've been interested in it since the trailer came out, but I yeah, haven't yeah, looked yeah. at anything in it beyond the trailer I and that either. one sentence, which was, nobody listens you, to this for news. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. but, if you, you know. go read it yourself. Yes, you have the fucking internet. The internet exists. <laughs> Sorry, just the little, the little morsels that I've heard about GTA 5 in regards to that stuff make me really interested in hearing what the hell they're doing. Cause that sounds fundamentally uh, different from other gta stuff. even if it's even if it's a failure like i'm really glad it's something different yeah, <laughs> yeah. it'd be so easy to just be you're a new guy yep and here's a 14 hour campaign go didn't gta That's 4 really come cool. out pretty close to the beginning of this console cycle uh no it was like a couple no. years after the, the this xbox has been out for six. Oh god it's been seven years seven years yeah so i think it came out like five yeah. years ago yeah i was still in la because i went and got it at midnight <laughs> and, and I had just joined Twitter, so it was 2007. Huh, okay. Yeah. You were ahead of the Twitter thing, ahead of the curve. I guess. I don't know. I was like 09, early 09. I think. Mm. I think that's right. I don't know. Somebody right now is on the forums telling me Again, a thing that anyone in <laughs> find out in two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Through the exact yeah. same medium through which you're listening to this podcast. But yeah, that Xbox has been out for a long ass time. It really has. Yeah, played some of it last night. Oh, I was going <laughs> to talk the first about time in a year. It, the that is true and really weird. But the yeah. consoles being out as long as they have is really weird, and it seems like it's revealing. Like, doesn't the games that exist at this exact moment in time feel like they are the product of there being no new hardware for of just for, sort of tri- for AAA devs to latch onto? Like this, the well, the thing that's frustrating to me is it feels like the stability should mean that people are doing things that sound like the line items that we're talking about for GTA 5, where you're taking your game and doing weird shit with it. Right. But it feels like what's actually going on right at this exact moment is that a lot of people are in a holding pattern waiting for new hardware to come out. I don't think it's because of that necessarily. I think part of it's because of that. But I think maybe the more important part is that we're just... I mean, the way that the world is going and like the... Then I think the way the places and people are playing games and the way they're paying for games, et cetera, et cetera, means the number of games, the number of big AAA games that can be successful is just falling. Like the ones that are successful are as big or bigger than ever. But, we, but it's like we have this very constrained. We I, admittedly, a lot of the rest of the landscape has changed, but we also had about three loops of five year console cycle. And mm-hmm. we're well out of that at this point. Yeah, like we've left that true. orbit entirely. So yeah. the cycle of 
launch games, mid games, late games, which are then getting hyped up for the next huge drive of hardware that creates another buying frenzy, just isn't happening right now. It feels like I'm not. I don't know if that's good or bad or whatever, but I think and you think that's impacting people's buying habits. I think it's impacting buying habits, and I think it's impacting publishers who don't know what the hell they're supposed to be doing with this many entries in their major franchises on the same hardware platform because you don't have the instant stupid bump of it sounds better, it looks better, you play it different. Right. Use this game as an excuse to try out the new hardware that you've justified buying to yourself. Like right. we don't. None of that automatic marketing has existed for like the last two years when it usually historically has mm-hmm. in the, in the sort of just cycle of triple a dev it's it's it feels weirdly untethered yeah like halo 3 odst and 4 is a lot of halo for it's it's one extra halo and reach <laughs> and reach it's yeah. a fuckload of halo yep like that's it's twice as much halo as you got on the original <laughs> xbox yeah um yeah well th- yeah i also think i i think you're probably right i do think though there's but that's an there's, additional compounding thing which is just that i don't think anybody knows where like I don't even think we know what the next generation looks like as compared to the way that we definitely knew how sure the, you know yeah. like the well the the place that just computers and even just specific like specifically PC gaming but also just people using computers as multifaceted devices also yeah. obviously everyone has a computer that's as goddamn powerful or more powerful than the original than like the previous console generation in their, in their pocket pocket yep. so yeah things are things are fucking weird right now but and, and you, there was a there was an article there was an interview I don't remember where it was from but the, I saw it on Gamma Sutra with Tim Sweeney from Epic Games talking about the upcoming console cycle and he's like yeah I mean we're pretty hopeful that the next generation of AAA games will you know, only cost about twice as much to make as the current ones. And it's like, that's your hope. That's like your optimistic hope is only twice as much. Who are we going to sell twice as many? Like, how is that possible? How is that sustainable at all? Like, yeah. look how many studios have shut down in the last couple of years. It's just like, it's like the killing fields out there. Yeah, it's really I don't understand weird. what, like, I don't understand what people think they're doing. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's so, it's so, it's very strange to me. Like, I was flabbergasted when the news two days ago is that Blop sold the most ever. Yeah. Blop's two sold. Well, right. Ever. It's like the, this like so rarefied right. group of like Assassin's Creed, uh, Halo. Is Assassin's Creed 3 doing really well financially? I, I don't know if 3 is, but Assassin's Creed has been one of those Ascendant series. Right. I don't know. I don't know about 3. But like, you know, the Gears of War, Halo, um, Call of Duty, you know, that little like, group. I would has say just, Call of Duty and Blops are like in a world of their own like they're in the sort of a weird oh i know they class. are but they are and that class specifically that class but is but blops is like indecipherable the, call of duty is like the one percent of the one percent but it's still broadly like right, right, that right. untouchable group along with those others you know yeah i mean do you think do you think if you could wave a wand and just make the call of duty series extinct mm-hmm. that that billion dollars a year would like re- it would go elsewhere in the industry or do you think it would go I think to a other lot of times? Yeah. I think a lot of it would go, would just not be other games. Like I mean, I'm sure a lot of it would be, but to, like, yeah, you wonder just, or if, if just the call of duty series disappeared, if there are people who would just go, Oh, I remember when they used to make those. Well, I don't really yeah. just, I just don't play as many games. As I used to know that they stopped. Making right. Blocks. Yeah. That's my kind right. of my wonder. Yeah. I mean, there's no way to, it's just more of a yeah. talking point. They're all of buying of gravity bone and 30 flights, 11, two pack now available for Macintosh. That's true. I'm just getting on Mac. Yeah. But I, but I do think that there's, I think it's a lot, less extreme than this, but it reminds me it, a totally different audience of kind of how the Wii had this crazy explosion for its first couple of years, which I think was people who just saw the Wii as like the Wii sports device, right? Like right. in the same way that I think there's a lot of people who like they buy the new call of duty or they buy the right. new Madden, but, then but they don't see that system as like that, a platform. Well, yeah, that, stuff yeah. didn't keep filling that niche or yeah. that niche and there yeah. wasn't demand, but those, yeah, those people didn't suddenly spend their Wii dollars on right. Blah. In the same way that I on think the, the people, who, yeah, I think a lot of the people who play call of duty online are just until the next call of duty comes out and then they play that one. Yep. Like they're, I mean, maybe they're buying a couple other games per year, but they're not like investing broadly in the platform and like, buying a bunch of other things yeah. for it that where the and money also you have to through. sort of be like a very specific type of curious like to find other games if you're that player i think mm-hmm. you have to be sort of plugged into a, a level of the game's sort of marketing machine and media machine that you're probably not yeah you know you have to be willing to part with anywhere between 30 and 60 dollars for something that you don't know if you're going to like mm-hmm. you know it's actually you know what i mean jake you know what you said about they like oh when they used to make those call of duty um my brother is a good example of that he's someone who like pl- we played some computer games when we were growing up and like he played, he played some now and then. And like, I remember 
a couple years ago. He's like, yeah, I used to play that Call of Duty, but then they stopped making it for PC, so I don't really play games anymore. And I'm like, what do you mean? They, no, it's on, you can get it on PC. He's like, oh, the commercials all just say Xbox on them. So I just assumed it wasn't on PC anymore. <laughs> and he's that exact kind of person that right. you're describing, which is like, he's not going to go read a gaming magazine. Like, he's not going to go, like, research this stuff. He just, he's not, like, a gamer. But there was this one little thing he enjoyed that he would get, you know, if he knew it was available. Yeah. And, like, the fact that Microsoft just... You know, they have all those deals where the advertisements all have the little boop Xbox 360 at the end. And, like, he just sees that and he's like, oh, I guess that's just what it is now. It's on 360. I don't have one of those. Those ads are also crazy because the exact same ad can exist with the two different publisher logos on them, just depending on who's subsidizing that exact version of the ad. Like, the shot, the white studio shot of the console and the game box at the end and the tag at the beginning. Meh. Someone just underwrites it differently. It's weird. Microsoft is way more aggressive about that stuff, though. Like, you see those on 360 all the time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I guess, I mean, I think that's, it doesn't feel like the PC gaming market is, I mean, people talk about it not being like, you know, what, what, 20 years of it in the decline or whatever, but that's obviously not true. But it's, this I don't know, have somebody who, who'd gotten to PC gaming over the past year, it's sort of like this light bulb moment where like, oh my God, it's all, wow, like between Steam and just having this really like this machine that I can manage, it's totally functional and like I know how to fix it and like it's really not that hard to get into and I can buy a game for 10 bucks during a Steam sale. I can fi- play these indie games like 30 Flights of Loving. Um, uh, it's sort of this, it's this revelation and this sort of discoverable moment. But there's yeah. obviously because it's PC and Valve isn't out there pushing PC as a platform right. the way Xbox is. Right. Well, they could. They could afford to, obviously, yeah. but they don't. It's it's funny. They it's will. also really funny when you when you talk to people who are like professionals in the game industry, but maybe on the publishing side or maybe yeah. sort of on the biz dev side who just don't really consider steam. Right. They're always like, oh, I've had those conversations before. It's really weird. Yeah. Yeah. I had one yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> it was really, but then it's bizarre. funny being at a company like double fine where it's like, Oh, this is actually where we make the money. <laughs> yeah. Like this is actually where, where people are buying our games. Like it's, I mean, not that people don't buy them yeah. on console, but like, I mean, it's just with double fine in particular, that was, it's a weird thing because like Tim Schafer's legacy is totally with PC games fans and yeah. it for its first decade. Double it's, Fine. Well, it's, it's yeah, it's felt like for years and I, I feel like I, I always wondered if double fine had a false perception of the reality of PC gaming because of this, because it's loudest, most sort of ardent people are like, they started off as the adventure game. People were like, Tim, make a new adventure game, make it for PC. And then it turned into like, it sort of probably crossfaded into make Psychonauts and make it for PC. And then it sort of crossfaded into why isn't your whole lineup on steam? And I wonder if internally that always felt like, Oh, it's that one little group. To be fair. For its first ten years, well, all of those, deals. yeah, those were all publishing. Yeah, that's decisions. what I was going to say. Were not it feels like it's all on the sure, publisher. Sure. But it, 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 it always felt like they were a console first studio because they, they did get founded sort of in the sort of mm-hmm. in the like early two thousands kind of PC yeah. slump right. in a way. Yeah, when PS two is the biggest thing ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's funny to look at the comparison between that and now. Like we announced our Amnesia Fortnite thing the other day, and that's just like. Download a bunch of crazy PC prototypes, like help choose what PC prototypes we're going to make. Like it's all like the amount of focus we're putting on PC now as compared to like it's five cool. years ago is out of control. Yep. Yeah, it's PC games are weird. It's just funny that like my mom knows what an Xbox is, but my mom doesn't know what Steam is, you know? No just, moms because well, there's yeah there's is. been no yeah. there's been literally zero outreach right it's just funny to, even yeah. when really Valve does big national advertising campaigns it's for the console side yeah right. like yeah. Portal Two Left 4 Dead Left 4 Dead Two well Left 4 Dead Left 4 Dead Two or EA which was the yeah. not PC skews but Portal Two was a self published self funded ad campaign wasn't it I don't know it didn't have all the EA logos all over it like Left 4 Dead did I mean the console versions were still published by oh were they or the EA partners okay yeah and they had the the PS3 integration stuff that was a big deal yep. But they, that's they, true. They made a bigger deal about that. Than they, they didn't did talk about it publicly a ton. Though. I mean, it was in the gamer press, but like none of their marketing mentioned well, any they, of that Valve stuff. doesn't really, yeah, Valve doesn't really do like national mass market marketing, do they? For Portal 2, they bought Portal ads. Portal 2 is everywhere. Portal 2 yeah. had, had... Oh, you're right. Portal yeah. 2 had billboards everywhere. It had at least like, if yeah. you watched things like Hulu and stuff like that, there were yeah. like, the commercial spots for it. Yeah. Like it they went everywhere. crazy. Yeah. It'll be really interesting to see how how much Valve digs in against windows eight like if they if they decide to start pushing like a crazy linux steam box as like a thing it it feels so specifically like they're going in that direction i know like, it Gabe Newell sort of just like you know like when <laughs> he's doing the thing that a dog does when it's sort of <laughs> 
when it's when it, when <laughs> Gabe it, Newell is doing the thing sorry, a dog does. It's, it's it's one of the things that always cracks me up about dogs as animals is when they when <laughs> it's this, when they do that thing that Gabe Newell does. No, it's, it's, Gabe Newell's like a brilliant billionaire, yeah. right? Okay, good. <laughs> like so we're clear. When, when dogs are getting oh, agitated and they think they're going to start dog, barking, Jay you know what I'm talking about. When, so, okay, when a dog is getting agitated and it thinks it's going to start barking, it's sort of like its mouth flattens out and it just sort of goes. <laughs> <laughs> And then you and like Gabe Newell seems like he's in that mode right now about oh I see where it's just like where it's just like yeah just the little sort of champing at the bit yeah yeah just, and then at some point you're gonna get the brrr, and that's going to be like <laughs> oh fuck but like yeah where he just sort of like oh, he's, he's just getting squat and his tail's kind of tucked in <laughs> oh, God. this is a difficult mental image for me to <laughs> just to, to think about it in my mind yeah he's he's getting squat just, his tail's tucked just in. a little I guess Gabe Newell is just a big old bulldog like he you know I mean, getting squat. <laughs> Gabe Newell is just, um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Valve actually. If you're Gabe thing. Newell, please write Jake at questions. <laughs> <laughs> Berate him for besmirching your your name. Um, yeah, I mean that's going to be a hard needle to thread if they if that's the you know what I mean like if that's what they start trying to convince people to do, that's going to be tough. Well, because what Valve would be doing is effectively what. The Ouya and the Phantom and all of those guys have tried to do, which is right. make a weird semi-open. What is with that thing? Ouya? Ouya? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's... <laughs> I'm skeptical of that thing, but I don't know. Who the hell knows? Uh, maybe it's yeah. great. Ouya. Know. Who the hell knows? So, like know, like an Android-based <laughs> console yeah. or something? Yeah. 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 Open. Open. I, they say open, but it's not really open, right? Because they still control the dev store and everything. Yeah. Cannot... I think you can... You can sort of like do the weird side loady things, mm-hmm. but like the yeah. main channel that everyone's going to use is a, right. is a closed one. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm very skeptical of that thing. What wanna... did you think last night? This booting up an Xbox for the first time in like yeah, that's what I was just about. Time. It seems like it's time to start talking like, about that. Just to seg into what we played from the platform experience, just turning on the Xbox was weird. Like, I don't. I don't like that experience very much. <laughs> I haven't played. I haven't played my Xbox in like. I don't even have one anymore. I haven't played it in like two years. Well, the thing oh, about really? it, oh, I, I, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't loaded up my Xbox in a bit. Um, I, uh, I played a little bit of Fez, and that was the last thing that I played on it. Yeah, the but, last thing I played um, on it was Skyrim with Adam. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the thing that was weird about it was it had been so long since I had plugged in, or since I had turned on my Xbox and signed into everything, and like also it had been. A, I know, like. Most people, I think, or quite a number of people who game on their 360 use it because it's the because of live, because of multiplayer. But I'm not really, right. a, I'm not a big multiplayer person in general, and I'm especially not a console multiplayer person. So, plugging in the Xbox, and I have the pre, the pre connect one, so it doesn't have Wi-Fi. Getting the wireless bridge, plugging that in, connecting it to the network, yeah. finding a controller, finding a headset that worked, installing two system updates. We were running all over the connecting house. Connecting to you on. Do you have batteries? Like, like Jake's like, oh, he comes to me, and goes. I don't have internet in my room. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's like, oh my god! Like, so we had to get a wireless switching bridge. between live, switching <laughs> Run between a wire. switching between system link and stuff. It actually just felt like we were playing PC games. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. I think because we were I mean, in the house and we had, our internet was being shitty, so I ended up having to like run a wire. Yeah, we ended up, but like, like we were like, it was really choppy. So we ended up being like, oh no, we'll just do a, a we'll land. Just do a little play land game. And then it was like, <laughs> you have open nat, you have moderate nat. And then it was like, oh god, like, oh, but you're god, using a bridge. We're like, oh fuck, okay, like, you have wired Xbox Live. We're like, what is going on? <laughs> it was insane. But yeah, so we both bought Halo Four uh, because, as promised at the very end of last week, we're going to start co-oping uh, the single player campaign of Halo Four. I'm, I'm, bummed, that, I'm bummed that I couldn't play with you guys. Oh, you can join in though. Oh yeah, we got to get we got to get an Xbox in the office. Here. It's yeah. so weird. It's good. I like it, yeah, actually. I've been I mean, having a lot of fun. Um, I'm having play, a lot of fun. But. Did you play... So before you guys start off on like the actual Halo 4 stuff, did you play Reach at all, Sean? Uh, I played the multiplayer beta of Reach. Because Reach was the first Halo game that I just got bored of. And I, I'm not saying that's because it's a bad game. I don't did really know. Did you have know. a jetpack in Reach? Oh, I don't even remember. Multi- I don't even remember. That was the... Oh, in the multiplayer, I forget. But like this, I com- I've completed every single Halo campaign... Like at least once, in most cases, probably two or three I times. I completed one, two, and three. Um, I lo- you should play it. You should check out ODST. It's fucking cool. Really? It's the most to me. It's the most interesting yeah, campaign. Totally in ODST is the, the one series. where you're not Master Chief, right? Yeah, you're like an ODST. You're like a recon guy, but it's all like these vignettes. It's like a, there's like a hub world, but then you branch off into a series of like flashbacks, and that's each. Oh, I'm watching it's that. cool. And like, like there's like, these crazy yeah. like highly produced radio plays that are like their audio log equivalent, but they have like foley and sound effects and like. The really the most you know where audio log is usually just a guy talking into like a dictaphone basically. Mm-hmm. These the re, the ODST logs are like these really elaborate, like they feel like listening to a radio drama. It's mm-hmm. really just the whole thing 
just feels like it just was made by like a crazy strike team in Bungie that like wanted to try a bunch of crazy shit. And like it was very polarizing. Some people just didn't like how different it was, but I thought it was rad. Anyway, whatever. Um, uh, Reach was the first one. Like I even Halo 3, which I thought was the weakest campaign out of any of them. Oh, I, still, I did I, not like that. Yeah, I didn't like it, all. but I still yeah. played all the way through it because it's Halo. It's the only game that feels like Halo does. And and then by the time I got to Reach, I was by the time that game came out, I was just like, man. I played a couple hours of it, and I'm just I'm like I it's not wasn't bad or anything. I'm just like I just I don't keep, can't keep doing this, yeah. and so I'm really I'm like incredibly fascinated to like see what I think of four. Four is weird. Is it weird? It's got some weird stuff in it. It's cool though, cool weird. Yeah, like that first person, like basically Nathan Drake style. Like climb up that elevator shaft. Elevator shaft climb. That's oh, weird. weird. Yeah, yeah. Is there a lot of set PC stuff like that? Um, well, we're also only in the first were, chapter, yeah, which we, I think is where it's going to be the heaviest like, on that stuff. You know, we but just went through the whole first. Someone section. was saying the co-op is different than the single player. It's campaign? not. No, I don't think. There I went is, deeper. There is also yeah, a yeah. separate co-op only thing that you can run. I think. But, okay, good. I was going to say that no, would be really disappointing. We were just playing like. First off, <laughs> it just doesn't acknowledge your two Master Chiefs. First off, that's how they awesome. all that's how no, they all it's, are. It's so good. It's but hilarious. No, 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 no. In three, it's Master Chief and that alien dude. That's true. In, yeah. In in Halo Sweet. in Halo one and like in the I don't know. Yeah. We were just both Master Chiefs, always, and it's yeah. fun. Um, I Wait, to, wasn't two the one with the alien? No, three was the one with the three alien one sidekick. With the alien? Yeah. Okay. Which one had the alien sidekick? Let's <laughs> readers decide. <laughs> Sorry, I I have only ever played a half hour of Halo one split screen multiplayer that is my only halo oh my experience God. in my entire life halo one split screen multiplayer. i know that was your life for a while oh, but best. yeah adam and i, I am a, a weird person to be co-oping halo 4 i imagine given that i'm just like who's that blue hologram girl <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and everyone in the entire world just goes Ugh. i am grossed out by the cortana shit in the trailers like cortana is literally just model her as just a fucking naked computer woman yeah yeah i i find it really she lives in your pocket though is that not is cortana okay well no that's how she always is but like in the older games when it was just less high fidelity it just looked less just overtly sexualized like it just looks really like completely head to toe rendered yeah she sort of like existed as sort of a mm, yeah just sort of a flat image, I guess, almost in your HUD sort of thing, and in your yeah. in your back of your mind. She'd show up in a hologram, but like it was really yeah. No, there's just sort of like a naked cyber lady. She that actually shows just pops up. out of your hand. She just looks like you're holding a Barbie. Does it does it seem as weird? Is it as weird in the game as like I? It seems like I don't. I just feel like there's. It just seems really it's like a suspicious it's not the choice bone to me. It's not the bone I'm going to pick. It's like yeah, sure, yeah, you know enough. what I mean. It's just sort yeah, of like yeah, yeah, yeah. is it lame? Yeah, but I'm like it. Uh, it also I, just blends in with everything else, which is just she doesn't sci-fi. Feel, movie. I mean, the thing is, is she's not like. She's not like, she's not other be, than other than not being actual, all, uh, yeah. she's she a, a sexualized representation, right? She's just sort of like, but she also just, live she does female just form. stand still and give you she doesn't tech like, information. Like it's yeah, not, she doesn't like, that you just, know what I mean? Vamp. Even the way you're describing it doesn't like, I'm not oh, you've to, got this like little naked lady in your pocket who just gives you tech information. Like it's, it's just, it's a waste also of called our, young male wish fulfillment. Yeah, that's your problem. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. It's a waste of our time to fixate on that. Yeah. All right. Just, yeah, yeah. it is totally like in the context of the game you look at it and go oh, come on and then just sure you're just, like, sure, yeah, you just yeah, yeah. Get tim's over tweet it. from yeah. yesterday was like pretty much yeah, completely... tim shaver posted a tweet he's like oh good. i really like this halo 4 game they give you like there's a there's a tiny stripper that lives in my pocket <laughs> <laughs> and that was it and it's like okay, yeah that's about it social commentary mate um yeah but uh the thing you and i were talking about this but just i haven't played a major triple a console game in quite a while like I've but what been, you have done is made a game that is not that so when you're just right i've been working in yeah. in like the telltale tech like we're doing some like we deliberately stylize a lot of our art because of the fact that we don't have the back-end tech to power the sort of things that people are paying 60 dollars we just for don't do retail. bombastic expansive but like, things but also i just have like my PC has been acting up for quite a long time. I've been using my Xbox primarily for indie stuff. Same with my PC. And then at work, it's not the sort of games that I work on. So popping in like this month's or one of this month's big ass console right. games. Yeah. It's crazy. Jigs, jigs on the headset. <laughs> and I just hear him going like, Jesus Christ. Like, like, every, like that, 10 minutes that is so. a thing that I'm actually loving. Like yeah. I'm actually like just the bombast. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's, nuts. it's also stupid. Yeah. Sure. But when you come out of a tunnel and it's yeah. just that expansive valley, but yeah, that's the thing that it's it's a thing that I haven't. I mean, the last time that I experienced anything like it, I guess, was Portal Two, which is just one of my favorite things about any first person game, especially first person narrative games, and Far Cry Two is uh, 
just walking out into an amazing space. Well, Halo is all about that, and it's yeah. great. Yeah. It's just fantastic. And the stuff they did a good job with four. At least, the, and also, sorry, yeah, no, just the the pacing of them. And I was just gonna say the pacing of the of the. There's this really like wide breadth of of settings and milieus in the first like mm-hmm. the first chapter was 30, 45 minutes. Yeah, and you go from trapped in like corridors in a spaceship to climbing an elevator shaft to an expansive space like vista mm-hmm. like um right looking out with starships floating on the above carrier you. that you're in and it almost sounds like the arc of halo one you know you start off on the little right. ship and like it feels very similar to the halo to that, world actually. that's cool it feels very yeah. similar to that and then you end up down well, on then everything planet. everything that you just saw majestically in space crashes so you end up in this wreck like dark fiery sort of at night but like there's god rays and god rays and like light like the sun is coming through right. the haze it's, it's yeah. just if you fire if you want to live in an extraordinarily expensive, well-realized virtual space that is just filled yeah, with yeah. with sci-fi book cover majesty, you should yeah. play the first <laughs> yeah. chapter of Halo. 4 but I would look because... over, and Jake was like his like his Halo man, his Master Chief would just be staring up with like his gun pointed to the sky, and he just sort of like running forward and running back. <laughs> I know, and, I was like, and running forward. Come stand under this spaceship here, and look at the sun. Right here, look at, go take take two steps left. Take two steps right. Watch that. Look, look at that God Ray. Look yeah. at that. Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stupid. Yeah, but like just two Halo guys, just sort of like. Dance, like, the hilarious like, like a weird upper body tango. torso perfectly still and then the little feet like going in the different directions as <laughs> yeah. you're strafing around that's yeah. one of the funniest looking things it's like yeah. an upward facing tango yeah hilarious. playing yeah. halo is a weird experience for me though because i generally <laughs> it's really good actually playing with jake is awesome by the way oh yeah yeah it's sorry it's like fighting a bear <laughs> It's like, Jake, just go in there and make some noise. So Jake just, like, faces right at the aliens and shoots them and throws grenades, and I just run around. Because right, Halo you're maps doing all are the, so like, expansive, stuff, you know? Yeah. Like, I Halo just, maps are built for flanking, like, on yeah, large, oh, absolutely, like, yeah. 100-yard, multi-100-yard yeah. flanks. Yep. So Jake have, just goes I have goes no Halo enemies. AI combat acumen at all, though. Right, yeah. So right, it's yeah. just like, yeah. oh, man, it's great that that guy's rolling for cover, and that guy popped a little glowy shield up, and then <laughs> yeah. I can go and melee him, I guess. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Sean killed everyone. Good. No, it's good, because he plays he plays Halo, like, the way you would get into a fight in Bioshock, which is just sort of, like, go straight on, switch a lot of, do a lot of weapon swapping. Yeah. Whereas in Halo, it's not really what you do. It's sort of, like, jockeying for position and getting, like, in flanking. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Oh, God. And it's funny, the things you guys say about the games you've worked on, and then, for me, just thinking back to working on Bioshock Infinite, where, like, working on a a really combat-oriented first-person shooter game, there were so many... Like, we looked at Halo so much. Really? Not because we're trying to, like, just copy Halo, but, like, uh-huh. there was so much just, like, Jake, you say, like, oh, the guy, like, ducking for cover and, like, and doing the side roll thing. We, in like, I remember capturing videos of all of that stuff, like, again and again well, and again for, like, to examine. Like, I mean, it's just, I don't know. Like, I don't want to say too much about that process, but, like, it's funny hearing you say, well, saying I going from working yeah. on Walking Dead into that and then me, like, because I haven't played a Halo game personally for enjoyment since before that experience it's also playing like i've i've been playing some dishonored i obviously played bioshock bioshock 2 played um deus x3 Mm -hmm. and those games are all very different than halo but it was absolutely it was a fun reminder playing halo how visibly clear enemy AI mechanics can be at least to my personal brain in a shooter like Halo is fucking good at that mm-hmm. like so it's all uh, their visual information the, the clarity is, of yeah, the animations when current. enemies f- are looking for cover when they roll into cover when they roll out of cover when they pop shields when their shield mm-hmm. is turned away from you mm-hmm. like it all fits inside of their cheesy sci-fi aesthetic which is fun to be in but just when guys like have a body shield or when you're hitting their armor like it's it's where all stuff, bullet, where like shots are coming yeah, from it's, it's all like, stuff all that i'm sure everyone who plays halo so well takes done. for granted but to me seeing it it's it was oh, yeah. it was a crazy reminder like it was just a fucking punch in my face yep. for keeping keeping it harmonious from an aesthetic standpoint but also having the readability be so goddamn high for no, these absolutely. encounters and it's also well, all in arenas which i was not yeah. really remembering it, i mean i, I don't case. take it for granted at all it's one of the things that i think is it's uniquely cool. good about halo but it's also comes from a very deliberate a different deliberate space than games like dishonored and yes deus x3 which come from that like weird looking glass-esque kind of muted pc thing yeah. and there's also the fact that the so much of that readability comes from the fact that halo has a broad milieu of non-human enemies like working yeah. on working on bioshock and, and like kind of looking at those lessons comparison <laughs> that stuff is so much harder to do when all your guys are sized and proportioned like human beings that's true but even just i'm firing at you i'm not firing at you i'm being defensive i'm being oh, sure yeah i'm being offensive i'm going for cover i'm in cover i'm out of cover mm-hmm. just it is admittedly you can get away with a lot of that because they are aliens. So they can move in weird ways that clearly mm-hmm. accentuate yeah. that stuff. 
it's so clear and crazy. Oh, like, I know. No. It's one of the only yeah. games that I've played in a while where I actually feel like I'm aware of what the enemies that I'm fighting are doing, whereas a lot of the time I feel like I'm trying to guess what the designer is trying to tell me that they're doing, mm -hmm. and it makes that makes me feel dumb. Yeah. And I am dumb. But part I'm of that is also... Nick part, Brecken's telling me sure. that I'm a fucking baby. Part of that is also, though, that the designers of Halo know exactly what every player is going to do, which is kill these guys. That's true. You know, like, they, can, totally be, they can be very telegraphy because they're all telegraphing <laughs> against the same intent. God, when you Halo know, 5 like, has a... Uh, a full has the possibility for a ghost playthrough right well and there are and there are definitely moments in halo where they the designers clearly intend that and those never work as well as they would in like a dishonored or something but yep. that's just not what those games that's not what the core systems are intended to to provide but i do totally agree with you that at those things that halo tries to do i mean to me it's like far and away i mean there's just nothing there's no other game that i think is even close like no. i think i mean halo is really the one series that is about combat and nothing else mm -hmm. that I care about, right? Like I just don't. That's not a. That's not like a just gameplay paradigm that I, is just like interesting to me now. Except I will always be up for playing Halo because it's, it's just so. so it's, it's also so good at it. I mean, this is going to sound like a really dumb thing to say. Can't wait. But it's. I just I like that it's just fucking shooting aliens like, instead of people. Yeah. Like, I just don't feel weird about it. It's mm -hmm. just sort of like... It's You'll feel weird when that human skull pops out of one of them, though, oh, coming man. soon. Surely. We saw that in that trailer, in that David more, Fincher trailer. Game tonight. <laughs> See, I, I agree with you, but only because Halo combat is so weird and exaggerated yeah. and, like, nonsensical, you right? Because like, there's guys with... glowing needles Yeah, and, and there's, and like, like shield... Because to me, it just feels like a total contrivance that is... O that only exists to convey that experience, which I'm totally fine with that right. in a video game, right? Like and also, that's, I, I but I'm getting but physically I, stressed out killing people in games. I know that sounds weird, but yeah, like, yeah, you've mentioned that. Yeah. I've just been having a really, it's so bizarre. Mm -hmm. Like, I will murder somebody in Dota. <laughs> no problem. Right. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, uh. Well, it's an expressly competitive activity where the, the, you're, it's you like matched up against another person, and that's really what's going on. Yeah, but like, I've been it's having not a, a story real about hard time just like stabbing stabbing yeah well that's why that's why the, all the all the not all but pretty much all of the triple a games i've been playing recently have been these weird ones where i play as these just like ghost guys you yeah. know like i i i don't I, even when i it's crazy it's interesting to me how even even compared even in the amount of time that's elapsed since deus ex 3 where my first playthrough is nonviolent, but my second playthrough i went crazy murder guy even in the time that elapsed between then and now I've like all my interest in playing the murder guy playthrough has like just disappeared. It's weird. Yeah. I don't know. Except Hotline Miami. Well, that's literally all, the only thing. That, that game actually. Oh, is. except sorry. the game which is footnote only murderman. F footnote. For I played Hot a footnote. I played Hotline Miami for like an hour this morning or forty five mm -hmm. minutes maybe. Yeah. It finally, like, not like experientially, not like yeah. philosophically, but it yeah. finally like mechanically clicked with me, and I yeah. was finally able to do things that I wanted my guy to do. Oh, really? Yeah. Or, like, it was really that yeah. was nice. Yeah. I, it was it was just nice to hear you like because I've been I think I've been talking positively about that game but I'm really bad at it mm -hmm. and now I feel like I'm a, you're getting what it's about well yeah I think I knew what it was about but I was okay, bad at it sure yeah. now I know what it's about and I can perform up to the right. level that it requires to move on <laughs> also as a like parallel little cap footnote of that, that footnote of yeah. a Foster Wallace Here's my, style. Like, this is this is probably puts for the most part this is like the little end cap on my mar ongoing Mark of the Ninja commentary mm. but I I beat the the turns out the part I was talking about last week where you start getting all these more stealthy things was just like the end of the game. So oh. I finished the game, but there's a new game plus where you keep all the abilities you had in your original oh, game shit. and the game just gets crazy. Like, so you're stoked about this. Well, there's a funny thing about Mark and the Ninja where you know you can be, if a guy is not actively like shining his flashlight around, you can be just a centimeter outside of his cone of vision and he can't see you, right? Like that's just how mm -hmm. that game works. And so I'm like, wow, these guys just all have fucking glaucoma or something. Like, what's going? What is going on? In the new game plus, you have that too. It's hilarious. Like, you can you can only see a few feet in front of you unless you're like leaning in that direction. Then you get an expanded view uh, cone only in oh, that shit. direction. So it though. actually makes it symmetrical. Yeah, or probably at least closer or to closer symmetrical. To it, yeah, um, it's crazy. But you have I have my crazy like blink thing or whatever they call it in that game that you get very very far at the end of the game mm -hmm. or like far into the game in the normal playthrough. So now it's fascinating because I have this combination of a lot of the same perceptual limitations that the AIs have, but I have this rule set that is that is focused on like extreme silent quick movement throughout the world, and so it's 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 
So you awesome. like, can, you can like, like blit into places, but then there's a guy there? Like, yeah, yeah. So you have to be really – so your ability is incredibly high, but you the stakes are – proportionally high as well so it's not as if your, so your both, decision making has to rise to the occasion. exactly yeah. yeah and it's i it's awesome it's like to me it's of the most satisfying way to play the game that i've experienced yet and like it it's i have just it's not a thing that i've it's not a combination of variables that i've seen used in games very often it's really cool it also it seems like a really good new game plus mode mm-hmm. because you could not introduce no, someone or you could, no. but it would not be a game that's as successful as Mark yeah. the Ninja it would is. Be Whereas a it's weird like niche game that you've someone put made. Your, yeah. you've, you are intimately familiar with everything now. Get ready to be fucking owned by this thing. Right, but if you but if you do things well, you can like the cool thing about it is you can get through crazy lasers and crazy lasers. You can get, you can get crazy lasers. You can you can bypass <laughs> stuff like that just by blinking right through them. Like so so if you do rise to the challenge then you can just skip huge swaths of things it's like it's cool i don't know it's great i'm gonna end up playing through this entire game again which i did not expect at all um because i it just i'm playing the exact same levels but it just feels like almost a different game and you get that that thing that steve was talking about with dishonored that i then seconded the week a week later after mm-hmm. our first primary where you can a just blink boss where you just traverse through a level like just a, a just like a wizard you know where you just bam 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 and you can't quite do that because there's a cooldown on right. your thing but there's the equivalent of it where you like blink through a laser and then know that you can jump exactly this far in front of a guy and just get that chain mm-hmm. through the whole thing you can do that in normal as well but like it just feels it's cooler, really cooler when, when you, you know that, that every, exactly yeah. yeah it's just amazing it's an awesome feeling Anyway, that's it. Mark of the Ninja seems like a badass game. I need to play more of it than the yeah. demo that I've played. Well, my, and, and, it's, and I, I feel bad for my kind of initial – I feel like I was a little wishy-washy on it when we started talking about it. But like it took a while for me to, to really get into this. You seem like you're in deep in Mark of the Ninja. Yeah, point, yeah. And I – yeah. Um, I, I do still wish the skills had been distributed more in a way that would have allowed more of the – stealthy stuff just to invest in that yeah, from let the it game. come online earlier um because yeah. it just even now like 90 percent of my skills are about killing guys which i'm just not interested in but like but definitely i'm glad to have invested as much time as i did because i'm just at this point my the experience i'm having is just fantastic it's just awesome That's so good best. job nelson cool. company yeah do you guys want to talk about that chris roberts game Oh yeah, Star Citizen. I, Star Citizen. Yeah. Oh, Jake yeah, and I. Yeah, yeah. Jake and I had a little <laughs> freak out about. It. Uh, God, we had a little. This is not new. Like this. No, is, we had a little '90s cockpit freak out because we yeah. finally all sat down and watched all the videos for Star Citizen. Yeah. Which is the new game by Chris Roberts, who made, who was at least most well known for the Wing Commander series. Yeah, at origin. And yeah. the Wing Commander movie. That's true. <laughs> he had a weird, like, secondary career as a movie producer. Yeah. Um, he ta- actually, we should talk about that for half a second, just because I read an interview with him talking about the Wing Commander movie, and he basically was just like, "Well, learned a shitload on that." Uh, anyway, like he's not. He, I've always sort of he's not like creatively proud of it necessarily, no, it, but I, like that, the existence of that movie had always um, sort of painted a weird picture in my brain of that guy. Like I still don't uh, know yeah. what he's like personality wise, yeah. but it seemed like he made the Wing Commander games, which started off as. Um, it, they, you know, they started off as the VGA, all sort of hand-drawn, no 3D elements. Then they yeah. aged up along with the rest of PC gaming and sort of fell into the weird multimedia pit where it was like all FMV stuff. And then he launched from there to just cutting the game out entirely and made a feature film. Right. And it, the feature film was basically cutscenes. But the interview with him right. recently was him just saying, whoops, turns out a feature film is not just a bunch of cutscenes. Turns out you have to actually know how to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so sorry That's about cool. that. Yeah. But the... Um, Star Citizen looks like it really tosses a lot of the multimedia elements out and yeah. it's just back well, I think to... that was kind of a mass psychosis for a lot of yeah. PC game designers in the 90s, right? Where guys who I think they're in their like kind of game design fiber was were not the the desire to just chase the like weird content driven kind of cutscene stuff, but it just like it took over, right? Like for, yep. for several years there where that's just every series had its weird like FMV version or like yeah, just, everything. You yep. know, everything. Yeah. yeah. Um but yeah, I again this is kind of like GTA where I feel like we haven't done much more than look at some videos, but but oh my Star god. Star Citizen just <laughs> looks shit. it just looks like fucking pornography for a 1992 PC gamer. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I mean it a- Which is actually just pornography for what it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair. Um, but, like, the, <laughs> That's <no>. true. Okay. <laughs> it's one step removed from from that. Yes. <laughs> With the exception of um 
of first person shooters and like maybe a very specific brand of like strategy, like specific kinds of strategy game. Games now don't actually look like what 12 year old 90s you were imagining. Like, were, yeah, that's yeah. not actually yeah. where things went. But then you look at Star Citizen and it's like, like, holy Christ, <laughs> show this to the me who played Wing Commander and X Wing and TIE Fighter. And it's Tears. like, oh, yeah, this is what game will look like in 2012. Like, of course like, they will. Oh, man, you bet they will. <laughs> but like, Wing Commander. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Because I know I played Wing Commander 1 and 2, and Chris, you you were more into the. I was more into the LucasArts uh, X Wing yeah. TIE Fighter ones, but I remember. In Wing Commander, I liked flying the missions, like, and the encounters were really good, but the thing that always actually grabbed my imagination when I played those games is the whole sort of sim experiential thing where it's like between missions you go absolutely you go well, sit in the barracks with your bunk mates you too. go to the bar yeah uh, and hang out you like see who's who's like the the hot shot cockpit on the flight wall yep. and then you go to the hangar and pick your ship yep. and all that stuff but they were all just like single screen 320 by 200 right uh, svga imagery images. by the way that was the one thing i liked about the narrative stuff in starcraft 2 which was like some of the worst story i've seen yeah, in any but game Starcraft ever. 2 had that experience like, too you're yeah, right where it was like yeah. oh man i'm hanging out at the fucking bar with my crew yep. 90s style yep. <laughs> <laughs> but the the videos for star citizen just your brain is just fucking torn open and s- s- yeah. s- squished all over the screen like a magazine ad for star citizen would have <laughs> in 1992 <laughs> But that, that we watched the GDC video that Chris Roberts did this last year where he was just demoing the game. And he's like, here's the outside of it. You're like, okay, sick. Looks like Wing Commander. It's the cheesy, like, green, yeah. g- like, desaturated aqua and gray splattered industrial space station. And then we'll go inside. Like, oh, fuck. It's a fucking... It just looks like a yeah. Mass Effect well, bridge or something. Walking, yeah. Yeah. Then he just like, your first person walks through the entire yeah. fucking thing. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's built in, it's built with Crytek. It's yeah, Crytek three. Yeah. three. Yeah. So you're looking well, over, and the yeah. fact that it's unbroken, right? He walks into the hangar, he gets in his ship, all, switching between first and third person. He just climbs in seamlessly. Well, he goes up to the bridge first. He starts yeah, the yeah, bridge, yeah, and then yeah. he walks down to his right. ship. Yeah, and then he gets in. Ship goes out. Not a single loading screen. Nothing. Then he's just climbs in into a ship space. in first person, flies yeah. the ship in first person, yeah. let's, let's flies go. by the bridge that he was walking in right. two well, minutes ago. <laughs> you're you're skipping fuck? an entire level of dork of dork suspicious porn, which is climbs up the fucking ladder, sits down, situates the two legs by the pedals, straps right. in the yeah. seatbelt, closes the thing, gratuitously like taps on four right. like little like, on hit on robot hinge things. touch yeah. screens to activate the ship and then takes off in first person. Right. <laughs> And, and then as you and fly, your body movements are the same. Yeah, yeah. It's just Ridiculous. stupid. It's it seems stupid and expensive, but also but he's it's awesome though. He's been crowdsourcing it between a private site, which is what is it called? Uh, Robert's, Robert's Space Industries. Robert's which the Space logo Industries. is fantastic. Yeah. Also, yeah. yeah, that and Kickstarter, and they've raised millions of dollars. 4.4 yeah. 4. or 4.6 million, 4.2. Like between Kickstarter and their own. Yeah. It's weird that I'm so excited about this because there's no there's next to nothing known about it other than it just looks like what your brain wants. Well, it's completely re. It just is the. Yeah, it's exactly what your brain imagined when you were it's, thirteen. It's except now it's a, a paradigm mean, that doesn't exist really anywhere else. We in can't. Games. You can't speak to the quality of the game, but it is. No, it, of course it, not. It's, but it's pushing the same sorts of buttons that I imagine seeing the first imagery of XCOM did for people who are really right. into old XCOM, where it's just like, yeah. this is a crazy space cockpit action, like flight action sim. But done with all of the dollars that no one would ever give to one of these games. And the, one of the cool, th- one of the things. So obviously, there's a lot of that stuff where it's like, oh, you like hit the throttle and you turn, you yank the stick, and you, you know, pr- like activate shields or whatever. And all that stuff was reflected with your hands and feet mm-hmm. in the actual copy. Like obviously, that stuff was gratuitous. But there's also something I find really cool about just the rigor associated with that from the design side, which is the same. It's not the same, but it's similar like it reminds me of the mentality um expressed by the the sim city 5 team where they're like we don't put anything in the simulation unless it is physically also simulated yep. visually in the world That's- and there's just something about that that i think games have so little accountability to them right like they're all right. made up like you can put anything in a, if you want to you can just put anything but in a it's game it's cool that both sim and city like, and from the sound of it the stupid st- uh, Star Citizen and Cockpit are actually mechanically sound in, yes. in sync with their aesthetics. Yeah, and like, obviously yeah. it's a you can still that make any of that basically. stuff up. Yeah. But like, at least they're holding themselves to one level of accountability, which is what they can depict. Those like, SimCity 5 I think videos cool. make your brain also yeah. barf out yeah. of your face. Yeah. 
That's all anything does to me these days. It makes my brain barf <laughs> out of my face. And I just I like when anyone imposes that kind of creative constraint on themselves, right? Like, I mean, you can still go crazy and like they could still be totally gratuitous with this, obviously. But I just like that there's something visual that they have to pay for. Um, Is it weird that we have XCOM and Star Citizen and SimCity 5 and all of these sorts of things appearing? Like Dishonored. Yeah. Is it weird that there are people – like why are we at a point right now uh, – where we're getting, like, it feels like there was just a 10-year gap, kind of. I wonder if part of that is because, I mean, we've got the super crazy AAA stuff, right, that's still doing its thing. But I wonder if part of it is that a lot of the, like, sort of transient, um, uh, like, people who ha- were into game, like, played games for a few years and this kind of, fe- I have a lot of friends like this, right, who, like, had a comp, maybe had a 360 or maybe an Xbox One and then just kind of fell out of it. I wonder if the core people who still bother to still actually play games and go to game websites and read all this stuff. Like, I wonder if just enough of those people are the long haul guys who have just been into this stuff for so long that there's actually a like bigger actually than expected just... addressable market remaining of this group that actually can be targeted. Yeah, we're now. just, we're just in a place where that audience again feels monetizable in a way that yeah. it didn't for a while. Yeah. Because there was all this other huge big. And when, when, like, when people can't chase after everyone who has a PlayStation exactly, two, yeah. you think like <laughs> that's kind of a hilarious. I mean, I, I don't, maybe not. I'm just guessing, but like, that seems like <laughs> there might be at least part of that going on. Cause I mean, yeah, it's, it just it's feels like that, this, like that audience is just like going, wait, you guys are listening to me now right. again. What, <laughs> why are you making SimCity five? Why are you making a fucking wing commander game? Like, yeah. what do you, who are you? Yeah. Like, what? Well, and the what? fact that you can just get money from those people directly now. Yeah. Right. Like he raised four well, and a half even million through dollars crowdsourcing like, through steam, like XCOM right. surely. Yeah. There's, there's an addressable market. Steam there's people whose money is available, be it just to buy a game regularly or yeah. to help fund it or whatever. Like, you can mi- – I mean then there's a double fine adventure, right? Like there's just all of this shit that is like deliberately – I mean then there's a bunch of failed versions of those on Kickstarter as well. I mean there's not sure. – they're not all just succeeding indefinitely, no, like just automatically. It's, but happening I, but I, in, it's happening in the non-crowdsourced space as well with yeah, things like absolutely. XCOM. Yep. It's weird. It's yeah. interesting to me. Yeah. It but is, what, it is that stupid Star Citizen video Well, maybe also me part 12. of it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe also part of it is the fact that in the AAA world for just years now, the num- the types of games that have been made have just been – like narrowing and narrowing and narrowing down to almost nothing but first and third person action games. And like, that's just it. Like if you had a GameStop and just see what the new games are on consoles, like that's what they are. And there's all these other kind of games that maybe the market can't support a ton of each one of them. But it's like, if you're going to make a good version of one of them, people will get it. Yep. One thing that's worth pointing out about Star Citizen that I was just thinking about is Star Citizen uses CryEngine 3, which yeah. means out of the box, you get a fantastic physics lighting and surfacing yep. uh pr- probably content streaming all sorts of really weird stuff but a space sim game is probably or not it's not a space sim sorry a flight action game is probably oh, producible yeah. now in the same for many of the same ways that it was producible in the 90s which is it seems impressive as shit but at the same time what are you accountable for you're accountable for your space station like you're accountable for that bridge your mm-hmm. barracks your flight hangar you're accountable for your your pilotable ships, your enemy ships, and then you're accountable for stars in the background, right? Big fucking yeah. asteroids and That's planets, true. yeah. And then on t- and then anything other than that is pure mechanics, yeah. Right. Unless you want to inject a bunch of fucking right. cinematics into it, which makes it expensive. But like with the tool set that you have available now, if you're Chris Roberts, you can make the most beautiful one of those mm-hmm. ever. But the actual asset count is way lower than most AAA games. That's really it's a good point. That's really it's, true. It, like. And because the and there's, which I'm sure is why like I mean space 3D space stuff has been impressive as shit for a long time yeah right. because for like like free space or Eve Online or things like that look yeah. cool for the same reason but yeah. no one no one has taken what seems to be potentially the high producibility of that and put it back into that 90s stuff which right. is cool to see and a lot even a lot of the ways that they tell their purely authored story stuff is super cheap like the the fact that you keep coming back to the same bridge like I remember right you know I mean in Tie Fighter the the kind of recurring thing oh, they had was the little it's the same way no right? i know it is i'm just this yeah. is like but the the version the slightly different version of it they had in tie fighter was you're a member of you know the like empire crazy secret society whatever i don't even right. remember but like but but it was really effective like you come back and as you do these new things you're promo- you're like promote yeah. you there's like rising star within this organization but there's always the new sort of s- the new intrigue that's happening between the commanders of your yeah. specific unit and how that relates out and, and stuff. that stuff is super cheap compared to uh 
compared to doing like a bunch of big cutscenes. You're not, right. it's not, it's not a road trip like story. Yeah. 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 I mean, we have that, you're reusing yeah. all the same geo and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like it's, Hubs I mean, it wasn't are, geo back then, but like, you know, the same uh, sprites, the same sprites and, and backgrounds. But, but uh, it is super compelling though, because you get familiarized with these characters and yep. with this, you, yep. that sort of micro feeling of a big galactic battle is interesting. Yeah, actually. absolutely. Cause you have all the, you have all the scale you could ever need with the just being out in space. Like right. when you're, you look out when of you're a just window and you're the, destroyed. When you're just telling the human scale story stuff, I feel like you don't need to be bombastic because you have yeah, yeah. that yeah. just you have the like grandeur of space that is just yeah, permeates your game already. I remember being really into that when playing Wing Commander too. Like when you'd have yeah, you just you'd get to know the the five or six other characters that exist in your in your crew, and then when one of them dies out on a mission, and it's narrative centric, but it happens to happen when you're in the cockpit of your ship, it was actually awesome because of that. Yeah, and I don't know what they're planning on doing narratively in Star Citizen, but I hope that it's of that scope and doesn't like have you jumping to fifteen different galaxies and garbage like that. I wouldn't. I don't need it. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. The main character is actually a twelve year old who time travels from nineteen ninety three. He shoots up. He's like, holy shit. You're the best pilot around. <laughs> like, we've been monitoring your progress. We saw you playing X. We saw you playing X Wing versus TIE Fighter. God, yeah. If the story of this is they've been watching his progress in Wing Commander 2 because yeah. it's the last Starfighter style. Like, yeah. it's a fucking. <laughs> they've just been planting Wing Commander games across the multiverse. And right. this one yeah. kid is the best with his yeah. backwards baseball cap and his flight stick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the main We've thing. got your gravest joystick. <laughs> right, yeah. The, the, it's got the, the super, like, futuristic uh, overall engineers, like. <laughs> Welding his stupid his side, his stupid the... fucking sidewinder <laughs> into the futuristic ship. Yeah. <laughs> You're all set now. Got your lucky flight stick. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, he's got his stupid uh, PC accelerator, uh, like hot chick poster taped up inside of his locker. Right. But yeah. it was just a, a character from FX like, Fighter it's the or girl something from the Wonder Years or whatever. Like, yeah. no, if it's a if it's a stupid pinup character from a PC games oh, magazine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, although I guess PC XL probably actually did just have bikini shots. They did. Yeah. 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 That would <laughs> God. Why isn't that what it is? That's probably it, what it, it is. might still be. You if know, enough you, of uh, us if we can if we can get Idle Thumbs fans to put like two million unique Idle Thumbs labeled dollars into this guy's <laughs> campaign, maybe we can demand that we have authorial control over the backstory and that it's the story of some kid named probably Alex. Who yeah. uh Yeah. 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 That's he what? gets shot down somewhere over an alien planet and then he's just floating in space and he misses his mom and he cries, but then he gets saved. And like some like big badass like space marine like wipes his tears away. He's like, I get scared sometimes too, kid. <laughs> that's what happens, by the way. Space will do that to you. Yeah. And then the You're two a of star them, citizen. He's now. that's that guy who saves him is the guy who he's like. He would never fly with that kid. Like he was always sort of right. rough and dismissive. Right. But then, <laughs> right. then that guy's like, "I'll be your co-pilot." Like, and he, like, well, that main guy, that, that guy, I don't know anything he, about the actual mythos, but that guy's just the, probably the main character from Wing Commander Two from the game that he's already played. Oh, like he's the guy that the guy in Wing Commander 2 is based on. Yeah. They used his right. story yeah, right. to send yeah, yeah, back yeah. to the kid. Right. So he's like, I've been oh at this God, a long you're, time, kid. You're, you're, but you you're, knew that already. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> also, weirdly, it is Mark Hamill. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Luke Skywalker? No, I'm the no. guy from Wing Commander. <laughs> oh, totally. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I mean, I'm this guy. And the, uh, uh. <laughs> but yeah, if the, final, if the final mission is you're flying, but then he's finally on your radio because he's the guy you like facing it, the other direction yeah. in the backwards chair who's, manning, who's firing your missiles. And then or he's he, in his yeah. squadron, obviously. No, he's just yeah. with you. Okay. You're sitting in his lap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He's letting you drive the car? Yeah. It, it's really weird. So you're <laughs> oh just like, God. hit the gas. And then he... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <gosh>. Roger. <laughs> yeah, he's dead serious about it. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait for Star Citizen. <laughs> that's what I, that's cool. what I gleaned from that YouTube, by the way. Yeah, for what it's worth. Clearly, yeah, it's about baseball kid. <laughs> yeah, basically. Good. You want to take a break? Yeah. Oh yeah, we need okay. one. <laughs> Video games. Great. I've played five real lives. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. They're always really tragic. Oh no, I had a good one though. Yeah. Yeah. While we're just on, while we were waiting for email. Yeah, I had one where um, uh, I was a woman and my husband and I um, lived in uh, rural China and saved and saved and saved and saved and saved to when our kids were 17, we emigrated to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. We saved all this money and immigrated to the United States. Legally? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. But like we lived in squalor. That was like I was in playing New Orleans. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, in China, oh, oh. the idea was that Amelia and I's strategy was to just keep our diet at meager 
the whole time. Oh, yeah, yeah, classic strategy. And as long as we didn't get, as long as we didn't get sick or anything, or like yeah. our health didn't go into decline, just keep doing that. And uh, honestly, the communist healthcare system is probably what kept us alive because really? we always had healthcare. Huh. We never didn't have healthcare. We could yeah. always, yeah, even if it was bad, even if it was bad, we never had didn't have healthcare. Yeah. And uh, that's something that the game is really like teaching me. Like I've played four other four other matches where I've had matches, four other whatever lives where I've had okay things going for me, like putting money in the bank. But like even with money in the bank, I can't go to the doctor. It's just healthcare is just not available. Right. So I die. <laughs> and it sucks. Yeah, yeah. And it just is really, really illuminating. But like even though I've been living under the like living in shitty rural China because there's this meager healthcare, I was able to move to America right before my kids went to college. And they were basically be, like, I died probably like 20 years later, mm-hmm. but knowing that my grandkids and stuff were going to have, were like going to be American citizens. We also wanted to move to, um, <laughs> our strategy was move to new Orleans because we don't remember there being a whole lot of good Chinese restaurants there. <laughs> 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 so we kind of used our That's really our fun. Western know-how to influence yeah. the lives of yeah. the Powell family, or whatever their name. <laughs> yeah. God, I played one though where I was in Mali, uh, which is like sub-Saharan Africa. No, it, yeah. And oh fuck, my dad died when I was three. My brother died. My sister died, and it was just me and my mom, and we both were just like. We were playing like like musical chairs, except with malaria. <laughs> Jesus. So she'd get malaria, she'd get better, I'd get malaria, I'd yeah. get better. And then I remember over the course of like the, my last three years of my life, just watching my health go into such complete decline. Right. Just watching those bars go, just go down. Yeah. And it went down to nothing. It's like an opportunistic infection has killed you. I'm like, fuck. I was like 24. Yeah. Male, 24. Working as a subsistence subsistence farmer. She was doing the same. My mom died before my mom. Lame. Yeesh. It sucked. Yeah. <sighs> that game is so important. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I might be up for my, my idle thumbs goatee. <laughs> but it's from 2010. God damn it. You keep calling it Real Life 2012, but it's Real Life 2010. I know. It's one of those games where I just want to reach out to that company and be like, look, if I raise some money, can you let me do something with this? <laughs> like, just yeah. whatever. I don't know if the engine underneath is accessible to, like, yeah. Yeah. you know. But, uh, yeah, there's probably not much of an engine, but you know what I mean? Just yeah. what is outputting yeah. the, like how, what is the, what is doing, what is crunching the math, Yeah, you know, to make the decisions, I guess if you can, you know, plug into that to make a, I don't know. That yeah. game is so fucking good. Yeah. I just find myself being like, I have 20 minutes. I'm like, what should I do? I'm like, and I can just minimize a light, you know, cause it's turn-based doesn't right. matter. You know, right. I can just live forever on your, on your desktop. Yeah. I just keep playing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> All right. You want to do some reader mail? We should talk about a galaxy oh, first. Yeah. yeah. We're back now. <laughs> and we're, we're back, still back now. We're back. We're back always. We never left. Mm-mm. No break happened. You harassed somebody on Twitter. Yeah. Our our friend Aubrey, who posts online uh, under the name Hilarious Cow, is a developer who formerly worked at... Uh, Splash Damage. At Splash Damage. He worked on Brink. Um, mm-hmm. He sort of made the rounds on the internet, on like the gaming web last week because of a YouTube video that he put up of a game called Super Meat Boy Galaxy, which was his... Um, it's a birthday present for Tommy Refinez. Yeah. The, one, of the, one of the Team Meat guys. Yep. He, um, uh, Aubrey said in some posts on Reddit about it that he was he did it just sort of out of idle curiosity because people say, oh, X game can never be adapted from 2D to 3D. Uh, I think he was, he was thinking about... 2D to 3D Sonic the Hedgehog, 2D to 3D Worms, like where everyone just bitches about how moving to 3D inherently fucks everything up. Mm -hmm. And he did this as sort of a mental exercise to see for himself, what if I took Super Meat Boy that is this crazy, it feels very much like it's contingent entirely on its its 2D presentation and the movement system being used in 2D and adapt it to the spherical... Uh, Mario Galaxy 3D platform 3D platforming that yeah uh, and it's it's an interesting he gave us a build that we checked out it's today. a real game it is a real game it's really cool it's a real video game 
I don't know what to say about it entirely other than it it was super surprising that it it actually does allow you to get into that same crazy space that Super Meat Boy does. Yeah. You got into it like I was Chris, watching. Yeah, you put your hands you on like, that and then zend out. It was yeah, fun. Yeah, you were like the the power glove kid from that movie The Wizard. <laughs> He's, good at, he's the guy who's good at video games? No, you're like the other kid. The kid who like... Uh, Chris the, is like the power glove kid for sure. Not the good guy. That's usually how I envision myself. So. Yeah. yeah. No, you just totally got in there. You can, def- you can definitely get the same feeling of just like rec- sort of controlled recklessness is how, I always, is how I feel when I play Super Meat Boy where I always try the thing that I feel like is just beyond the point of safety. Mm-hmm. Right, like the, there's like the there's like the uh, amount of time you wait between each jump, and then I always want to do the thing where I just erase that time. Where like I think I'm still operate, like I think I'm basically jumping at the right time, but like just get shave off like one that like sixteenth mic- of a second, yeah, that yeah. one bit of like decision making, and I try to just not make that decision and instead just deal with the lack of not right. making that decision. So right. like correct in the air rather than make the perfect jump, right. and like. You have the extra like sixteen pixels of slide space available to you, but why take it when you can just make the jump right. now? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like that's how I that's how I like to play that game. And the way that I played Super Meat Boy w- was just relentlessly doing that until I've made it work. Right? Like instead of like it's like the that's kind of how I play Hotline Miami. Mm. Oh yeah, same here. Yeah, where I am. That's like, a good comparison. I could you could stealth it out to the max, or you could sort of maximize wait time, yeah. but it's it's way more thrilling and also just the loop is kind of built yeah yeah yeah. for just kick down the door pick up the knife throw it as fast as you possibly can you're you'll probably kill the guy it almost you know what that reminds me of actually um the stuff i was talking about with mark of the ninja today that's what makes that that's what separates that game for me between that and like dishonored even though i'm now at the point where they i both have that blink and that stuff in dishonored i'll I'll still stand there for 20 minutes like i said last week but in mark of the ninja now in the situation i have where like my vision is so constricted that I, I feel like I'm actually more empowered to make weird leaps of faith. And yeah. so I Leap will... Leap of faith is the correct... That's yeah. exactly the feeling. And so I will just try the crazy shit now in Mark of the Ninja. But yeah, it, you know, like, it's, it was cool playing Aubrey's tech demo yeah. for Meat Boy Galaxy. Yeah. And actually, especially watching you, because you immediately were more adept at it than I was. But watching you do the weird Super Meat Boy-esque... Just jump, slide, jump, 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 jump across all these things and to the point that it just looks like a weird sort of blur leaping across the screen. But seeing it in 3D meant that also you were effectively doing – or you were doing things that from halfway across the room looked closer to things like wall runs and stuff like that that you really wouldn't mm. be able to do because the extra axis of movement exists. It right. was – it made me actually – I know that he just did it as a birthday present and just sort of for laughs – but it made me actually want to see it built out into a full yeah, game. Yeah, like totally. the level is obviously, it looks like he built a sphere and then it's extruded a bunch of faces yeah, yeah, and then yeah, sort yeah. of made a path through them where, it, whereas the actual Super Meat Boy levels are obviously really, really deliberately yeah, built yeah. and really rigorously tested. Yeah. Whereas you can this, feel in the game the level's not deliberately constructed in that yeah. way, but but the mechanics feel like it could support a game that is. It's, it's worth pointing out that the thing that he worked on in brink what it was like the mantling stuff is yeah that, it was the movement it was all that sort of like parkourish, like mantling which like smart for, the smart system i think they called it where yeah, yeah. that was also my favorite thing in yeah it blink. was awesome yeah the the drink or brink blink blink <laughs> yeah in brink oh bank oh in bank video from rad game oh, tools you worked on that yeah he, he worked on the rad game tools mantling system that's available <laughs> inside of bank videos <laughs> Weird. What does that do exactly? Uh, your video crawls up a surface in real time. <laughs> oh my oh, god! So like you texture map your video yeah. onto like. Speaking uh, of a th- uh, speaking of a weird amorphous shape crawling up a surface in real time. Yeah. That crisis GIF. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> do you have that? Can we show this to Sean and yeah. get his reaction? We should. We should just preface this though. Yeah. So all right. So people were talking about. Um, like our dis- this was in the Idle Thumbs thread on Gaff. Oh my god, yeah, okay. Oh, so you did I didn't this. see it, but oh, okay. I remember well, you guys we talking, talking, we were talking week. Yeah, you find the thing. I've so got we, it up. Oh, okay, good. So we were we were talking about last week how the kind of feeling of safety or lack of safety when you're leaning out from Dishonored and like, you know, the the just the weird sense that even though your head is out there, people aren't really seeing you and like the it's just a little it's a bit of contrivance on the part of the game to like make this mechanic work, right? And then and uh Someone was saying on the thread, like they, they were wondering this about Crisis, 
And so because the, Crisis has this really weird sort of fluid pop up. Yeah, behind where you cover. can like cover into a thing and then like look up and see what's on the other side of the cover. When you do that, you're exposed and like people can see you. So it's a very distinct, two very distinct states from like crouching behind cover and then having full vision from above, from like peeking up above the cover. And so someone like the game does not support a third um, third person perspective officially, but like someone just you know like did some console command, I assume, to just force the camera to orbit rather than be yeah. within the, the character model. And someone made an animated GIF of what it looks like with this guy popping in and out of cover. And it's incredible. We should put this on the blog. Yeah. We'll put this on the Out of Thumbs blog. It's, it's amazing. It's basically just the guy, like the, cri- the crisis man, like crisis just sprouts a like crazy giraffe like bulbous giraffe oh my neck God. that just <laughs> like it just elongates no, his entire him. trunk like, extends yeah. like yeah. a freakish slinky dog yeah yeah it's so good and also because it's a first person game the character model has no head which just makes it look yeah. out of control it's nuts but yeah the, the the way that they achieved that is stupid but then someone after that gif was posted in gaff someone went oh that's why cover's not in multiplayer <laughs> <laughs> yeah because just this horrible rubber mutant yep. man is there yep. oh it's it it freaks me out in the same way that seeing like the weird Boston Dynamics robots freaks okay. me out, where your brain just goes. <laughs> uh, your brain does, does weird things yeah, this episode. No, this is like some Exorcist shit. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. really good. So we'll put that on the blog Patrick probably. The blog. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Oh, I guess just watch this. I'm, I'm ten times in. <laughs> yep. It's when his It'll head ducks forever. down into his le- into his knees, like he's gonna barf, but there's no head there. Yeah. Weird. Uh, Super Meat Boy Galaxy reminded me of one thing before we go into reader mail, which is we talked about. Um, we talked about tennis, that uh, weird sort of competitive single screen uh, tennis game. We talked about JS Joust and a few mm-hmm. other things. I don't know. Did we talk about this last week as well? But um, I don't think so. About the the developer of Quop and Pull Riders and the developer of JS Joust and mm-hmm. I God, I can't remember the other games. Hokra. And Hokra um, are doing a Kickstarter called Sports Friends that is their attempt to actually bring all of those games out on console as a single package. So there's a Kickstarter out now called Sports Friends. So if you've been wanting to play JS Joust and Tenez and uh, things like that that we keep talking about on this cast and then feel like assholes because no one can actually play them, they're trying to put a campaign together to actually Mm -hmm. flesh those out as a fully featured console and PC release. Yeah, so Um, search search for Sports Friends on Kickstarter. Yeah. It's one word. Um, Anyway, yeah. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, you should check out our stream of Tenez. Although that game is weird. It was it was it's goofy. Awesome. It, it is awesome. Good. All right, let's do, let's do some rear mail. Uh, Blake Herman writes, uh, As I listen to you guys talk about Mark of the Ninja, I found a couple things interesting. Chris was talking about how he used stealth tactics to tackle the game, and I recall I was also inclined to do that. If I was seen by a guard, I'd restart from a checkpoint. I did it over and over again, playing sections until I got them perfect. This went on until I uncovered one of the new items, the terror dart. Once I got that, I started having way too much fun just watching the guys freak out and shoot each other. I was wondering if you guys ever had experience in games where one new mechanic completely changes your entire approach to a game, like turning you from a stealth sneaker into an outright level-clearing murderer, for example. Thanks, Blake. P.S. The other day I was playing Far Cry 2 and I threw a Molotov into an outpost and the fire got really out of hand, burning out a ton of, land- ton of landscape, and I thought of you guys. Oh, huh, That's adorable. That's sweet. Yeah. Sniper rifles always do that to me. Yeah. Every time I get a sniper, yeah. I'm like, well, that just I'm becomes what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just become the dude from Enemy at the Gates. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm definitely a sniper guy for sure. Once I find one of those, although in general stuff that's purely mechanical, that rarely happens to me because I just won't even try. Like I've already got, like I would never have reached this conclusion this guy did because. I wouldn't even know. Like, you wouldn't I would have tried the terror. Yeah, I would dart. get the terror, and I'm like, oh well, whatever. I guess I have this other tool I'm never going to use, and then I would just never even look at it. Like, I will never use 75 percent of the abilities in Dishonored or Mark of the Ninja. Like, I'll just never use them. This is not, which is weird. I don't know if that's crying. good or bad, but it's just like. But I mean, it's no, no. no yeah. You know, they made their game to support the way I play it, and yeah. so then I just don't. Yeah, that's you, why I really liked playing whenever it's done with Steve. Actually, we use like, well, I really, you know, like. I wanted to give you to give you um, telekinesis up front, so you used it and got used to using it and yeah, you enjoyed yeah, yeah. using it. Yeah, because I think it's a cool ability. Yeah. I thought, and yeah, I thought that was great. The way Minerva's Den focused itself really cleanly around a lot of the sort of secondary or tertiary yeah, that stuff was powers cool. that people didn't necessarily or that Bioshock yeah. Two didn't encourage you to use was cool. Where you just became this weird cyber lord inside of Bioshock, it was really a lack like, of guns and yeah. a lot of hacking and a lot of yeah. 
pulling through Minerva is then where you just yeah. have the sort of like swirling army of like you just yeah you feel like you've turned Rapture to to you through weird hacking acumen. It's cool. Um, this doesn't change my playstyle other than it makes me look like an idiot. But whenever games suddenly partway through unlock double jump, oh yeah, oh god, ruined yep. the game. <laughs> my, yep, my game it. is aesthetically ruined because I become a hopping lunatic. Yep. Yeah. Like. Games that, games that stack jumping mechanics that aren't yeah. even necessary just turn it. <laughs> Actually, speaking of Mark the Ninja, one of the things that you get, um, I don't remember how, like where I unlocked this or what it might have been. A, anyway, whatever. At, at a certain, like one of the things my character has in my like optional skills that you can choose from is when you're falling, you can hit you can hit spacebar or I'm playing with the keyboard, but you can hit jump again. And then your guy like glides down softly instead of falling <laughs> down. So, but he but he like splays out like a flying squirrel. And he has the, he just looks like a flying squirrel. Is it an actual like, like, like just oh, everything yeah. opens up and then just yeah good. And so I just I even if I'm falling like three feet, my guy will just like, God, like I just can't ever not do that. It's I always too good. I always do that in the Arkham games and feel like such a oaf, like it's just a doof <laughs> where Batman's like on top of a car or something, yeah. and then just cape out just like right. to glide that like six feet yep. to the ground. Yep. Cool, yep. <laughs> cool move, Batman. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you got to do the cape thing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to flying squirrel it up. Yep. Sometimes you got to snipe a face. Yep. So Sometimes of, you got to play a video game. Halo Four seem amenable to long range stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Very arena based. Now, know. now I really want to play that game. I was so it's so funny because until You're like Halo Four now. No, I mean I just wasn't. It wasn't that I was like dismissive of it. I just didn't really. It wasn't registering. But, yeah, I just yeah. wasn't really paying oh, attention also, one or the other. Pistol but, zoom. Oh my god, pistols. You know <laughs> Pistol <laughs> Zoom? Halo Chris, One Chris is gonna be all over Halo that. One pistol. They've just never nothing in any Halo game has ever topped that. The pistol in Halo 4 is pretty good. Really? It's not Halo One pistol, but yeah. I enjoyed sniping yeah. those little like they, you know the guys who look like little turtles? You know what I'm talking about? The little like the little sort mans. of wacky low level guys. Like, oh guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like zooming in Do on they those still guys. Have with, goofy shit. Like the stuff where they go, they run and, run and run away from you. All well, that, goofy, but, but like, le- they felt less goofy to me. Yeah, they oh, okay. they like they're sort that's of not like, surprising. Their that, barks aren't the, quite the, as ridiculous. That, like, the like, non Bungie oh, no! studio takes over yeah, and it gets yeah. a little less ridiculous. Yeah, that's yeah. too bad. Because my favorite thing in Halo is when Bungie just said fuck it and had the skull that you could turn on that made them explode into confetti and like the happy birthday sound. Like, god damn it, way to go, Bungie! Like that was on every headshot. Yeah, that was amazing. What's really fun is you turn that on and then you would like string three headshots shots together which was just yeah. the best it's like yeah Brr, yay yay yep. yay yep. <laughs> so god good. that was so good yeah oh man and yeah i would i would not have expected three four yeah three, you were you were hoping for off. the confetti skull though for sure Sean. i've been looking around for skulls I haven't found do them. they not are they not doing that like, we don't know oh yeah, yeah there's yeah, yeah. there's skulls in the, in the ui but i haven't found any yet god, well UI. i think the confetti one was just unlocked by default right no no no. it was a oh you had to find it still yeah the Halo 4 UI is really pretty also. That's cool. It's the good. main menu stuff is very clean. Very modern console UI. Yeah, it's good. It's the yeah. flow of it's good. Just thinking about like I'm now I'm just like, you know, paging through my Halo memories in my brain and just remembering just the ridiculous variety of tactics and approaches that those games support. It's yeah. just it's just outrageous compared my to like My favorite thing if I could run through that game. game with infinite sniper bullets, infinite pistol bullets and infinite sticky grenades. A happy man. I you would, would but see that would make it a less less good game because part of what is so great about Halo is those moments where you have to like, well, now all I have is a needler. Right, right. Th- fucking sweet. Like this but is gonna be great. Those are my three <laughs> like, sort of. Those are my three favorite. <laughs> no, no, no. Me too. When you land a no, sticky no, totally grenade. Oh, no. a, oh my god. I'm totally with you oh, on that. So like, I, if I could, I would just never use anything but those. But I'm glad that that's not an option to me yeah. because I think that would make a weaker game. Like mm-hmm. I love just the desperation not, of having yeah, nothing and then having like, scraps. Halo is shit not together. a like yeah. scavenge oriented game, right? Like it's not like a survival horror game. But there are still moments where you just end up in those situations yeah. where it's like, well, this is all I, I got. will say. Halo Four, the first. 45 minutes of it, they do not give you a punch of ammo. That's good. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. We were definitely, Jake what and I were running. What were you guys playing on? It's normal. Normal. Jake okay. and I were running around the, like a, a battlefield, like just searching bodies. Mm-hmm. And we ended up with like sort of just a hodgepodge of. What Sean wanna... doesn't know is that I was picking up every weapon and throwing it down pits. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I want to, I want to, uh, we have to, we have to, um, after we like kind of get into the game a bit, we have to do we have to start a legendary playthrough and just fucking go for it. Yeah, it'd be fun because that shit is the best when you like co op legendary and Halo. And you get out of a big fight. You're like, Holy fuck, like, we did it! Yeah, that shit is like also because it's, it's co op because you, you respawn if you're yeah, which is nice if your buddy is still alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. playing on a super hard difficulty isn't yeah. like no, it's good. Yeah, yeah, life running. Yep. Um. All right. Let's see here. 
Jonathan Ness says, hey, Thumbs Crew, I was wondering about your thoughts on something. <laughs> That's why you wrote in. I love games, but I'll admit <laughs> I'm not good at them. My first priority when starting a game is to navigate to the settings menu and go to easy. Uh, I've been ridiculed by my friends for this, but you jerk I've friends. never felt a need to Sorry. be any other way. Nick Brecken is Nick smirking Brecken at you right now. He's, <laughs> he's folding his arms. Yeah. He's got mirrored shades yeah. on, probably. Cigar. Then Nick Brecken started XCOM on normal and not classic. So fuck that guy. Uh, <laughs> That's what they say. Anyway. <laughs> That's what they say. Um, anyway, this guy, uh, Jonathan Ness, says, That all changed last fall when I got Dark Souls oh. kind of on accident. I had no idea what I was getting into, and the guy at GameStop told me I should check it out until it was too late. My mind and my outlook on what I consider quality in games changed. I would run through FPSs and RTSs on easy and just forget what I just played. But this was a game that forced me to stop and think. My hyperactive thumbs soon learned to be as still as I discovered every corner held a danger. That what, what happened to his thumbs? They're hyperactive. Oh, but then they, they, then they turn into a different kind of thumb. Oh, they were still thumbs. Oh, mm. Mm. That and the total lack of explanation for the world, your path, the level system, all confused and fascinated me. Uh, my question is this. Dark Souls is an open world game that contains no map. And no navigation system. There is essentially only two levels in the game, and they're both huge. You can get lost easily and often in the beginning, but this changes radically as the game goes on. Suddenly, you know every tiny nook and cranny of a world that seems too big and con- that initially seems too big and confusing to understand. How do you think that difficulty and level design are connected, and is that connection deeper than people give it credit for? Thanks for making me laugh, John. Well, this is fucking Nick Brecken's vindication. This email here. <laughs> yep. <yeah. laughs> this started off as like, <laughs> yeah. But I refuse to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the question, and I refuse to acknowledge it. <laughs> I mean, I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot of validity to what he says. Yeah, I think absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only game I've really played that has this that I felt that way in recently, I guess, was probably uh, Daisy. Mm, just sort yeah. Of, yeah, no map, no anything, just mm-hmm. unrelenting. Just there's nothing. And also, there's no the di- there's no difficulty. There's just other yeah. people who are better right. than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, which is sort well, of it's the same with Im- like Dota. For, yeah, for example, just sort of yeah. implicit difficulty. Competitive games are different, though, right? Yeah, a little bit. And I wouldn't call DayZ necessarily competitive. No, it's not. I, but you're right. It's not. Multiplayer it's, games yeah, are different, yeah, is yeah, right, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think I don't know. Like, I'm. Uh, there's the uh, the, the, th- the thing that one of the things that makes multiplayer games different than single player games with respect to this stuff specifically is the way that unknown stuff is revealed and comprehended. Right. You know, like in there's, un, there's lots of unknown stuff in Dave Z, for example, but a lot of it is just like how just being outwitted by another person. Like, whereas in, in dark souls or, um, you know, it really just any single player game where mystery is important. Mm-hmm. There are things that you will just, obs- that will like that exist passively that you just, come to get accustomed to or like come right. to find with but but on your own entirely like without without the um uh deliberate um what's what i'm looking for but like uh they're they're not being forcibly inserted by somebody else who is like right. who is there like outwitting you or being better than you it's not that it's right, just right, you right. against purely the unknown which there's something really wonderful about uncovering those things. Yeah, absolutely. And it's hard because I just haven't played this game and it's hard for me to, yeah, yeah I yeah. should just play it. Like yeah. at this stage, like there's sort of a critical mass of, yeah. of good things yeah. from people who are smart. So, I mean, what do you think about, I haven't really played much dark souls, but I played a ton of demon souls and like, it's very similar. I mean, it's, well, it's not similar in the, in the structure he's describing, mm-hmm. but it's very similar in terms of just that feeling of, you're just dropped into this place and, and there, and, it fe- when you start playing the game, it kind of feels like one of those games that's just hard, right? Like, or at least when I started playing Demon Souls, I'm like, well, this is just hard. I'm just dying a lot. It's just hard. But that's not what it is. Like, you start to realize over time that it isn't that. It's just you need to you need to be observant and careful, and and you need to make the deliberate choice to try and understand things, which a lot of games really don't ask of you at all. Of course not. Like a lot of games will just let you just bang your head against the wall until it works or they'll guide you through it very carefully. Um, Demon Souls and presumably Dark Souls. Or they're completely predicated on overt displays of yeah so you understand the game that's kind of what we were talking about halo 4 at the beginning it's like the game is all about visual communication yeah 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 yeah. the soul well there's some of those things that are similar because in souls you really need to learn how to read your enemies in really concrete ways Mm -hmm. so because a lot of because the combat is very much on just being better than the ai is being right like just you you know it's very the fights are all fair in when you're just going up against just a guy like a guy with a halberd right. or whatever like that's fair and it's it, the reason the difficulty works is because it's fair right you know it's not just like, he's not just arbitrarily gonna win like it's not just like an, a deep level of pac-man where the ghosts are really fast right yeah right. exactly yeah so, uh, 
a deep know. level of Pac-Man. <laughs> I don't know, just the, on its deepest levels. Yeah, Pac-Man. but but a lot of the stuff with the but a lot of stuff with like the sort of world, the stuff that's embedded in the world, and like just the way the broader system works. Those are things that that are like very obscured in a lot of cases, and you just have to be willing to observe and to figure things out and to think about stuff. And that's really cool. There's something really wonderful and magical about that. Uh, and that's something you know. A lot of games just don't even try to be that. Like, oh, it's like that a... eighth dungeon in Pac-Man. <laughs> the board, you mean? The eighth board. Eighth board. Yeah. yeah. I call them dungeons. Hmm. I call every video game level a dungeon, though. That's where I was raised. That was like the term. You raised in a dungeon. I want to play the second dungeon of Halo Four tonight, but I don't think we're going to be able <laughs> <Yeah>. to. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any more mail? Uh, what do you think? Let's find out. Let's look. Maybe no. If you have. Um, something you want us to talk about, write us at questions at idlethumbs.net. Henry Torres says... Like Henry did. Like Henry did. Oh, Henry. (laughs) Hey, Thumbs. Oh, hey. Hey, Hank. Chris, given your education background in music, what sort of technical factors do you listen for when deciding if you like a piece of music, soundtrack, or composer in video games? Are there composers you feel stand out for good reason or don't get the credit they deserve or even get too much credit? Thanks for taking my question. Happy forum poster, Henroid. Um, I don't really think I listen for technical things. Um... Although, I guess related to that, there are tropes that I strenuously dislike at this point because they're just beat into the ground beyond any oh. hope of, yeah. Speaking of yeah. that, it was actually really refreshing to watch the Star Citizen stuff and have it yep. be space stuff that was actually just sort of an interesting, weird, melodic thing and not yeah. just guys going, yeah. oh, it was just or whatever. Orchestra, right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, Latin choruses, stop doing it. If you're writing music for a game... Maybe don't have five four or seven four time don't with try Latin to side skirt that by having a Sanskrit chorus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you, you're just immediately a cliche. Like you just as soon as you make a choice like that, you're just you're just a hack. Like I mean, and I'm sure in a lot of <laughs> take that. What am I wrong? <laughs> like I'm sure in a lot. Of, no, shots look, fired. <laughs> I'm sure there are. I'm sure a lot of those cases are composers who know better, but the like. I don't know, the creative director or like the marketing Oh, odds are high that someone says, what something? if it sounds like this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and like, that shit is just the worst. Yeah. Like, it's just, I, I mean, it probably wasn't the worst one day, but like so at some point in history. But like at this point, it's just, I, I feel, how can you even like want a thing that just literally sounds like every other thing? When did that really start in media? Like, is that like a Lord of the Rings? No, it was before before that for sure. Sure, It was probably before that. I feel like for a while it was just straight up. Oh, it was in Phantom Menace. Oh, I bet you're right. Phantom Menace went a long way towards pushing that, I'm sure. I think for a while instead, like for a while it was just like Carmina Burana, right? Like it was just the actual like Carl Orff, like kind of progenitor of that in the popular consciousness. But at a, and like that just used to be used in a lot of things. But now people just do their like third rate knockoff of that. You just bang that out, and it's yep. just it's just everywhere. It's just everywhere. And the but yeah, that trailer we watched for Star Citizen, it got into kind of cliche military yeah, drum like military stuff. Yeah, military or whatever. But like call that, uh, yeah. like snare, like kind of yeah. drum and fife kind of stuff. But yeah. like the first few minutes of it were just really gorgeous yeah, nice. orchestral stuff that reminded me of like Homeworld or something. Yeah, right. Where you just have really nice orchestral soundtrack in space, like. That works really well, and it's there isn't enough of it that exists for it to be cliche yet. So it's so it's totally fine. Um, and flotilla. Mm. Oh my god, yeah, so Duh. good. I mean, just <laughs> I don't know. If you're making music, just do something that doesn't sound like every single other thing, or at least try yeah. to do that. Like that's the important thing. Was well, it like for a long time? And I've always been meaning to stream this one night at like two in the morning when yeah. I'm up and just in a weird space. Yeah, but. Uh, Space is I would play endless space that that or that oh, space, space engine space, oh, space engine, engine. Yeah, yeah sorry yeah. oh and you'd put on you and I would just put yeah. on like yeah like like an Italian opera singer it's right. just one woman yeah yeah and just just go yeah just speaking just, of that yeah. here are some things that are underused in in games like a single human voice rather than just like an infinite chorus of them a single violin rather yeah. than just. 25 string sections all just playing chords in a row like yeah. i mean just i don't or know those are things actually the melody I mean, line. I'm, yeah not to like toot our own horn but those are things uh we really put like so jared emerson johnson does the music for like everything i've ever worked on with jake yeah. uh, telltale but we really when he reduced stuff down in the walking dead to just yeah. like a cello just yeah oh so oh so good yeah. it made every scene so much better like oh it can make music can make shitty work awesome. <laughs> like it can make me having done really bad work. Um, Another thing that I yeah. always think is cool that like 
we didn't we we don't really do and not a lot of people do is mixing diegetic and non diegetic music. Right. Yeah. So we really I wish wanted there was to, so much you know more of that in this games. This is a this is a, like a mini spoiler, but it came out yesterday. Um so episode five is out and the tr- the credits music of the Walking or, Dead. Yeah, yeah, the credits music um sit through it because uh, it's a song that I absolutely love and it was part of probably the whole conception of the story was me just like driving out of my car listening to that song. But I was bending over backwards to figure out how to get it actually into mm. the game. Mm-hmm. Like into just have it into be the non- world itself. Yeah. Just yeah. have it be yeah. non not like coming out of a radio, but just like non like just soundtrack yeah. score. Non diegetic. Non diegetic yeah, right. score. Yeah. And we didn't like in a it. Martin Scorsese movie or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I feel like, God, I just wish I could go. That's one but, of those things. Yeah, it's, that is so hard to do in games. games it's been so much harder hours, and I'm like, to oh. do in games than in a movie. Beyond Good and Evil did a really good job of mixing diegetic and non diegetic. Red Dead like, Redemption. Mm. That's what everybody talks about. Oh, Red Dead Redemption. Right. Well, Red Dead Redemption. There's not a lot of in world music. I guess there's occasionally characters playing a thing. Oh man, what was it? Is it Stalker? Oh, where the guys playing? Where the, the guys guitar playing guitar? guitar? At the beginning? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, but that's cool. a Chernobyl, not Pipriot. Okay, maybe he doesn't, Pipriot, but, but they definitely do it in Chernobyl. Beyond Good and Evil was a game that I thought had a really good mix of atmospheric music, and then when just, you walk into like the but then the like when you walk into Mama garage. Go Garage and it's yeah, just that's playing, what I'm talking it's about. playing yeah, the yeah, Mama yeah. Go Garage theme, and yeah. then action music shows up and it feels completely different than yep. the environmental music that yep. feels more responsive. That game was a fantastic example mm-hmm. of just a ton of variety of feelings, but it yeah. all felt really cohesive. Also, it was funny doing like when I was working the music for Thirty Flights of Loving. Uh, the like what was originally the main theme for the game ended up becoming a thing that that Brendan just had playing out of the radio. Oh, the, the piano arrangement of it. Yeah, yeah, and that wasn't intended for that that purpose originally when I was writing, like when I was recording that version. But like, it ended up just being a really cool thing, or it was just this little like. It's cool the, the way that he diegetic. ended up making that choice, where you hear that as uh, diegetic on the radio, and then when the car crashes at the end, and you hear the string arrangement of it, right. or the guitar yeah, arrangement yeah, yeah, yeah. of it non-diegetically inside of the museum space it ended right. up feeling really really cohesive yeah. and cool yeah. yep that guy's smart <laughs> yeah brendan uses music really well in his games yeah uh, i think we're done freakishly well i think video games are, are complete video games video games <laughs> that was like, blah, 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 blah. we're done thanks bye oh so, there are you happy now